الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين أما بعد فعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الله ملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا مولانا محمد بارك وسلم صل عليه My dear respected brothers and sisters Jazakallah khairan for joining us once again on our Meme Badat uh, YouTube channel and our on our MSKA official YouTube channel as well. So this is going live to both channels so you can watch on any channel. Jazakallah khairan for joining us. And after praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, sending salutations upon the beloved of Allah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, I bid you all assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May peace be upon you all. Once again, jazakallah khairan. Thank you for joining us. Ahlan wa sahlan. And you are most welcome uh, for joining the YouTube uh, channel. Today, our program, as all our programs are very important, but this is a very, very important topic. And this is help us save lives and stop knife crime. And unfortunately, just recently, a young brother from our community was lost to this senseless, vicious knife crime. A tragic victim at the age of 16, a beloved son, a beloved brother, a beloved friend, lost his life sensibly to this victim. Uh, a tragic victim he fell to this knife crime and uh, we are shocked as a community it happened a few years ago it's happening all across the country it's not one uh, community's issue we all are suffering whichever community you come from whatever your background is we are all facing this crime and it's affecting our youth day by day abundantly so inshallah before our guests come on live, take your questions as well, offer advice as well. Uh, we're going to start off by recitation of the Holy Quran. And I'll pick this one verse of the Holy Quran because it's related to this topic. And I will translate it as well. This Me Madad Welfare Trust platform is for all. Muslim, non-Muslims, people with faith, people of no faith. So we try to do our programs which affect society, communities, and religious-based as well, and some are non-religious-based as well. So this, like I said, is a very, very uh, top, uh, topic close to our heart. And before I decide, I'd like to offer condolences to uh, Sarbad, the young brother who died. May he rest in peace. And uh, mm -hmm. I would like to offer condolences to the father, to the full family. May Allah Almighty, may God Almighty give patience to all family, friends, and the community. Amen. InshaAllah, this is a verse of the Holy Quran in Surah Al-Ma'idah, which is ayat number, verse number 32. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم من أجل ذلك كتبنا على بني إسرائيل أنكم من قتل نفسا بغير نفس أو فساد أو فساد في الأرض فكأنما قتل الناس جميعا ومن أحياها فكأنما أحيا الناس جميعا ولقد جاءتهم رسولنا بالبينات <تصفيق> ثم إن كثيرا منكم بعد ذلك في العرض المصرفون Translation For the reason we prescribe for the children of Israel that whoever killed a human being, unless it be for manslaughter or mischief in the land, then it is as though he had killed all mankind. When whoever saved a life, it is as though he had saved all mankind. And certainly our messengers came to them with clear signs. But even after that, many of them 
act excessively in the land. Now, the tafsir, the explanation of this verse, I'm going to just touch on it. That first of all, it says Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed this command to the children of Israel, bidding the previous nations. And there are similar commands in the Bible as well. So, however, the Quran highlights this clearly that if a person who is murdered and uh, killed in such a way as our young brother Salmad was killed, viciously attacked upon, killed, then this is as if a person who does such a crime, it is as if he has killed all humanity. And if somebody who saves lives, this is our point here now as well, that we are all here to save lives and stop knife crime, whether it's the police, whether it's the Deep Dog Community Association, whether it's the youth workers, whether it's the uh, NHS workers, everyone is here to save lives. So basically here the Holy Quran announces that if you save a life, it is as if you have saved humanity. So here we learn that if there is punishment given by the authorities, that's a different issue due to crime. That's not our issue. Our issue is the willful murder of people, persons, youngsters, adults alike. And if somebody does this crime, what is the command for such a person? You have killed as if you have killed all humanity. And if you save lives, then it is as if you have saved humanity. So you've got to pick your side. Where do you want to stand? It's never too late, wherever you are. Whether you're in prison, whether you're outside, it's never too late to make the changes. And you will see today from this program, a respected youth worker, turned youth worker, mentor, our respected brother Byron, who lost his young brother, in 2014 and how he turned around his tragedy to help others then you got brother omar khan working tirelessly in the community to educate the youth in not just knife crime many of the issues which we are facing drugs crime everything and then we've got our mentor and counselor who counsels youngsters offers counseling services to youngsters and adults he will be joining us and Brother Najif Shah will explain the services which are out there for you. And of course, then we have our respected scholars. One of the scholars, he doesn't, he's from this country, born and bred, seen the same youth as we all seen, deals with it on a daily basis in Bradford, our Sheikh, our Imam. And he will be joining us, inshallah, at 6 o'clock. Imam Adil Shazad from Bradford. And then we will have concluding words from our respected scholar, local scholar, who counsels and directs youngsters to the straight path. Our respected scholar, Imam Abdul Rasul Alouri Sahib, inshallah, will be joining us as well for a message for all. And of course, I've got my brother Shoaib Atari Saab, who's always with me, Muhammad Shoaib Atari Saab, who is my co host and is also a management member of Meme Mother Welfare Trust. And also, he is, uh, runs his own channel for the youngsters and for culture and also religious uh, basis on MSKA official. This program is combined in association with Deep Dog Community Association and MSKA official and Me Mother Welfare Trust. Alhamdulillah, well praise to God. We do a lot of work in poor countries and in the UK, tackling poverty and social issues such as knife crime. So now, after the recitation of the Quran and the topic explained that who our guests are. I'm going to request our brother Shoaib to, uh, he has prepared a dedication to Sarbad and to his family and for his friends. 
a special dedication. Uh, Brother Shoaib, who sees her mother as a friend, and to us, he was like our child. So basically, uh, Brother Shoaib normally recites nasheeds, but today he has specially prepared some poetry, which is very reflecting if you look at it and listen to it carefully by young brothers and adults alike. You listen to it carefully and reflect upon it. This is a great scholar, a great friend of Allah, a saint of Islam, who wrote poetry not just about religion, but about how to live your life, how to choose good friends, how to uh, deal with death, how to deal with sorrow, how to deal with hope, how to deal with patience. So. Brother has prepared this from the beautiful book, Saif al-Maluk, written hundreds of years ago. And today it's dealing with the same topics, same issues, which humanity sees on a daily basis. So this great Sheikh, who is known as the Kashmir, uh, the Ru uh, Kashmir of Rum, the Rumi of Kashmir, sorry, as Imam Rumi in Turkey is not renowned in Muslim and non-Muslim circles for his blessed Sufi poetry. This scholar who 100 years ago wrote this blessed book, Saif al-Maluk, after a blessed lake in Pakistan, he named his book after it because it's an ocean of knowledge. So Saif al-Maluk and the great Imam's name is Muhammad Bakhsh Rahmatullah known as the, the Sufi, the poet, and known as the Rumi of Kashmir. Brother Shoaib, I pass it on to you, and please recite your poetry. Jazakullah khairan. Auzu billahi min ash-shaytani r-rajim. Bismillahi r-Rahman r-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. To my brothers and sisters, all over the UK and all, all over the world. And um, I'm going to start off with the poetry, inshallah. I would be lying in the shape on your regime. Bismillah, your Rahman, your Rahim. First, first, firstly, all praise to God Almighty, who is the owner of every, everything. Whoever remembers his name, is never a loser in any field. Pour the rain of mercy, O God Almighty. Turn the wrinkled garden green. Make the plants of my hopes and loggings full of fruit. In this wonderful garden, he planted the plant of Adam. Peace be upon him with the fruits of his ex ex existence, adorned it with wonderful fruits. To comp the company of a bad man is like a blacksmith's shop. Even if you take a lot of care to protect yourself, you will get sparks in thousands. To company of a good man is like the shop of a, of a fragrant seller. Even if you don't buy anything, you come out smelling of fragrance. If you, if you do a good deed for pious man, men, they never forget it for gener, uh, generations. If you do good deed, for men, for mean people, in return, they will endure and hurt you. Everyone's, everyone pretends to be your friend when you are happy, rich, and enjoying life's luxuries. The true friend is one who shares your sorrows and does not abandon you when you are in trouble. It is better to keep away from a bad friend who does not 
help you when you are in trouble. The key to solving every difficulty is in the hands of true men. When they pay attention, troubles run away. If he is my friend, then everyone is my friend. Even a stranger is also my friend. O oh, Muhammad Baksh, a courtyard without friends looks dis uh, deserted. A God, O oh God Almighty, grant me lifelong commitment of love. I should turn away from all else. I should know one, regard one, and need one. O oh God, Almighty, light of a lamp of true love and enlighten my heart. Let the light of my heart spread all over the earth. A million springs of beauty will dissolve into dust. dust. O oh, Muhammad Baksh, love in such a manner that you are remembered forever. Don't say this is mine. It is not yours, nor is it mine. The, wor the world is only a few days, then, then everything turns to dust. The world is only a few days, only a few days. Do not be proud because the breath may or may not come. The body which you keep so clean from the dust ultimately has to dissolve into dust. This world is like a guest house. Many guests come and go, but no one dares. O oh, Muhammad Baksh, you stay, you stay here forever. Life is false pretext. Death is standing overhead. Tens of millions of prettier faces than you have gone to sleep in the ground. Do not rejoice at the death of your enemy because your friends to have to die. The afternoon sun is soon going to set for all. My beloved friends have departed, and so have the days of happiness. My heart is broken. O oh, Muhammad Baksh, who do I turn to now? Your brother shares your pain. Your brothers are strength in unity. Your father is the crown of your head. O oh, Muhammad Baksh, your mother is the heavenly breeze. A father's death causes sorrow. Brother death causes agony. After a mother's death, O oh, Muhammad Baksh, who will look after me now? Only the disheartened understands sorrow. Don't joyful, don't care, those who lost loved ones. Weep at the graves of their loved ones. Longer night of separation, or long as 100 years, who will turn, who will tell me now if my beloved will ever return? Be patient, patience will be rewarded. So the holy book informs us, patience unlocks all the doors of difficulties. Israel, the angel of death, brought the divine command. Shah re uh, recited wo uh, words of a true love and instantly g gave away his life. May God Almighty be, be with you, my friend. The world is a few days, 
the day will come when we will meet again. Surely that will be the uh, will be a day of celebrations. May Allah Almighty grant Sarmad paradise and patience and ease to easy family and friends. Ameen. Ameen. Beautifully, mashallah, recited. Uh, mashallah, Brother Shoaib, despite his uh, some difficulties, uh, but mashallah, health issues, he still dedicates his commitment weekly or every fortnight coming on the programs, speaking to the youngsters, his friends, his family, and trying to do it white good and uh, forbid evil. Jazakallah khairan, uh, Brother Shoaib. Now, inshallah, our next guests are waiting. But before they come on, our respected youth workers and our respected counsellor, before they come on, we have a dedicated video which I and my brother Shoaib picked for a dedication to Sarbad and to all the knife crime victims and all the family and friends which they have left behind. This is based on a true story. It's based on a renowned Nasheed artist, Zen Bika, who lost a young friend when they were young in his young days. And that's how his career started as a Nasheed artist. And it's called In the Beginning. It's only a short video, inshallah, four or five minutes. And then thereafter, we will uh, invite our guests and they will take over for the next hour. Jazakallah khairan. Uh, Brother Shoaib, I think we're having some technical problems here. Uh, we can't hear the uh, the song to the, the Nasheed, to the uh, video. Uh, Brother Shoaib, I think what we'll do is we'll go to our guests and then thereafter we will play this video towards the end. And by that time, hopefully you'll have sorted the problems because we are very, uh, time is very of the, uh, time is very of es the essence. We don't want to take any time away from our guests, uh, very important guests, especially in this related topic. And if you have any questions, you have a number there on 07855828060. I have got a few questions. There will be some question and answer session as well, inshallah. So if you want to text any questions, you can do it on the uh, channel as well. Uh, Shoaibai will be taking questions as well, and I'll be taking questions. Uh, Brother Omar and... Uh, Brother Byron and also Brother Najif are waiting, and I'm going to go straight to them. I've introduced them already uh, in my introduction. Bro other, our brother Omar has compiled this team of our respected brother Najif Shah, a counselor for counseling youngsters and deals with mental health issues as well. And mashallah, we've got our brother Omar leading it as a youth worker, as a mentor in our community. And we've got Brother Byron as well, 
who I've learned a lot about. Byron, thank you very much for joining us, all of you. And uh, we've learned about the work you've carried on after the tragic death of your beloved brother, uh, brother to all of us from our community, John George murder, which happened in 2014. And since then, uh, Brother Byron has led his way and, and basically changed the lives of many people and youth, educating them about knife crime and other things due to related issues. Thank you very much for all of you joining us. I'll pass it on to Brother Umar. Assalamu alaikum wa alaikum assalam. Wa alaikum assalam. Thank you for the invite, Cameron, to this event. Um, you are. We are we're here in some strange times, even with the COVID lockdown. Our daily work, especially the work that me, Najib, and what Byron has been doing since 2014, unfortunately, it carries on. And today we are very, very privileged that uh, I've managed to get uh, a young man that I've seen work only yesterday. He was out on his birthday. He's that dedicated that on his birthday, he sat with some young people from across Preston and shared his experiences. This young man, when I heard him speak in a meeting, I was, uh, I was choking up, I was tearing up because his passion, his enthusiasm, his trauma that he's been to, been through, he's turned that negative into a positive, and his impact on young people I've seen firsthand. Yesterday's session that that was a very very lively bunch of young men, but every single one was complete silence and absolutely engaged in what Byron had to speak about. Awesome. And today we have a great privilege that we've brought him. I'm so proud to say he's a local deep dealer and I'm not going to say any more than that. I'm going to let Byron take over the, the floor. Thanks, Byron. Yeah, um, I'm a bit blown away, as I was saying yesterday, Omar. I mean, I've been doing this for a, a very long time now. Um, and even before I talk about, you know, the JJ effect, um, you know, I'm, I'm honoured and I'm blown away. And I think people... Like I said to you, Omar, the other day, they might see me um, from another perspective and think that I'm one thing when I'm not. I'm totally, they're totally the opposite. I'm born and bred from three generations of Deepdale. You know, I, that's where I'd like to start. Um, when I went on ITV, BBC, when I, you're behind the scenes with all the, the cast, everyone's like, where are you from? I'm like, Preston, Deepdale. In fact, in, 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 if I'm totally honest, majority of the times I say Deepdale, Preston. Um, you know, I remember Moor Park High School uh, having constant fights with Sajid Patel and Harara Batten, <laughs> um, you know. And, and But the funny thing is, though, now when I see these people who I grew up with, I, I, I speak to Harara on a regular basis. I see Sajid, um, all the people. I could walk through Deepdale and then walk through another area blindfolded and know that I was no longer in Deepdale because Deepdale has... A different kind of feeling when you walk through it. It's crazy. And I remember walking to Reddy's, getting my, my sweets and then going and playing and mixing with different communities and stuff like that. And I want to make it clear before we even start, and I've, 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 I've sadly had to say this in many interviews and many meetings, it's that the question will always come up. Um, what do you think about your brother's killers and so on and things like that? As you can imagine, you know, I'm assuming a lot of people watching this are going to have them questions about the sad, sad loss of Samed, what we just had. But you've got to remember is that Deepdale did not kill my brother. The people who, who lived there did not kill my brother. Unfortunately, people that was miseducated and went down the wrong path and became different people than what they were maybe brought up as, killed my brother. Bad people at that specific time killed my brother, not the area. And that's why I've always said from the very beginning of doing this, I will, this is this is not a, a if or a maybe, but I'm going to make Preston, starting from Deepdale with the relationships I'm now building, especially with Preston North End, I'm going to make Preston the place that when London and other people around the country look up north, they're going to say, Preston and Deepdale are setting the, the, the standards in anti knife crime and child protection. And I've said that for years. And it's only now, in the last six months of, like Omar has seen, I've worked, I worked 24 7, seven days a week. Um, and it's only now that finally 
everyone's starting to come together. And the first thing that everyone's saying is the JJ effect, Byron, the JJ effect. And it, you know what I mean? I'm really honoured that we're, we're, we're now at this stage. It's just extremely heartbreaking, especially that this has happened in Deepdale again, that we've had to lose someone else to get to this stage. I think what the, everyone who's watching this needs to realise, because this is another thing that comes up as well, and I, I, again, I've said this to all my the other day, it's, it's kind of offensive, really, to the Highton family, is that when people say knife crime is now getting bad, when John Joe was killed in his last year of his life, that's 365 days, he was stabbed over 60 times. And he entered one of the worst murder cases in England, not Preston, not North West, not the South, not the East, not the West. He entered the worst murder cases in England in 25 years. Knife crime has been at his absolute most and, and, and horrific um, uh, studies have shown since 2014. It's just horrible and, and very heartbreaking, especially when I've lived that heartbreak and survived, so to speak, that we've had to lose someone else again. Um, and from what I've heard, this lad apparently was like an amazing little young lad and he had his life ahead of him, you know, and it's a shame and I think we can all agree. But yeah, then, then as time has moved on, um, I created the JJ Effect, which um, is a Deepdale bread company. It, all, it always will be, no matter where I go. You know, the, the JJ Effect does go UK wide, but it's it's home, it's Preston Deepdale. Hence why our new youth club, where Omar came yesterday and he watched us uh, working with our youth programme, uh, which we've managed, and believe you me, it's been hard to manage whilst under lockdown restrictions, but we've done it, we've got there. Um, and again, that's why that is set in Deepdale. Smart Fitness is still in Deepdale. Um, and that's where the future plans are going to be. The JJ Effect, biggest youth club and most successful youth club is going to be in Deepdale. I don't care no matter what anyone says, oh, there's a better building over here. You can get cheaper rates over there. doesn't work like that. The reason why the JJ Effect is what it is and I am who I am is because I was raised in Deepdale and John Jaw lived, breathed and died in Deepdale. So ain't no one, that, ain't no one taking that away from us. And that's what... Um, Hopefully, we can bridge this gap now and all start working together. Um, so, in the last year alone, including whilst being in lockdown from the last March, I've got a list here of some things that we've actually achieved. And I, and I feel like um, now's the time to maybe just go through the list. And bearing in mind, I'm one person <laughs> running this company, and this is the kind of things that, that we, we've been doing. And it'd be even great now if we can work as a community and do even bigger things. So, we've done a bike ride, I rid a bike to London for a young girl called Bonnie. She had she needed stem cell treatment. That took me five days um, and it was very, very hard, <laughs> if you can imagine. Um, we walked to Liverpool, raising money for a young boy called Carson, who sadly has actually lost his life now. He lost his uh, battle uh, with cancer. Um, so, you know, we, we raised money for the family um, and we walked from Preston to Liverpool. Uh, we built a youth club in a matter of two weeks with a fully functioning cafeteria, showers, food facilities. Uh, on the off foot of that, before, prior and now, we feed the NHS, we feed the homeless in Deepdale. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Omar, is it White, White Chapel, White House, the homeless shelter in Deepdale? Um, yeah, yeah, across the road. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That, so we've been obviously feeding them with any food that we've got left and uh, and stuff like that. Um, we've also, I also make music. Uh, that's become very, that's becoming very more and more successful because obviously it breaks down that barriers with the kids when um, they see me walking. Um, you know, full of tattoos and that. I like to make sure I've got every box possibly ticked as possible. So when they hear my music, you know, that breaks even more barriers down. Um, we work with CPS, Manchester Police, Lancashire Police, Children's Homes, teacher training. Uh, we've seen over, well, close to uh, 150,000 people. Um, uh, I've been walking the streets like Omar, Omar has, and I've taken over six nights off the streets, including two machetes. Um, we've had we've saved four girls, I think it was in the week in the, in the week's beginning of November 2020. So just gone, uh, we saved four girls from County Lines and Grooming in Stoke on Trent. We did a, a program called Ditch the Blade, where we gave my anti knife crime presentations on a VR um, kind of experience. So I'm, I'm pretty sure the majority watching this will know what a VR is. It's like a green screen. And uh, we paid a lot of money because we what we believed in that. And we went to a film studio and we recorded a totally virtual reality anti-knife crime and child protection presentation. 
And when we sampled that, we in the first weeks of November, uh, as I say, we saw over 2,500 people and saved four girls' lives. And that was in the first two weeks of November, just the first two weeks of November. Um, yeah, and you know, and you know what? The funny thing is, right, as, as much as I've been doing this for a long time, when I first set up the JJ Fair, this is what I'll, uh, you know, my mum's like my hero. And when I first came to my mum and I said, look, I want to do this by myself now. Uh, the police are backing me. Everyone's backing me. But, I, I, and I, you know, Omar, you've heard me say this. I, I wear my heart on my sleeve. I, I'm Byron from Deepdale. I'm dyslexic. I got kicked out of high school at 14. I thought I'd never achieve anything. So I, I turned to my mum and I said, look, I need a loan. And my mum believed in me. She gave me an £800 loan. Um, and this was March last year, the first week of uh, COVID-19 lockdown. Um, in that same day, I went out with that £800. I bought these signs, which I designed myself. Um, I bought a projector, a speaker, uh, and a few little other little things. And then within two months, the JJ Fett was as busy through constant persistence and work there's, than what we was prior to lockdown, all from a family from Deepdale and £800. And if that doesn't show us wow. that, that our community... Does it doesn't matter where you're from. If that doesn't show to me that like we can come from anything and, and achieve anything that we want, and I don't forget this is what I, this list I've just gone through. Like I said, this is just in the last year alone. Not even a year. We're not even not even done a full year. I was doing this before then as well. Um, so if I can achieve this, then just imagine what you know the community of Deep Dog can achieve when we all come together. Um, so yeah, thank you for listening to me. It, it, you know, I, I can't stress it enough that it's, it the t you know, it works both ways. The coin's got two heads, uh, two faces. I, I'm privileged and honoured to be here, um, and I really look forward to working with some of you. And, and not even that, showing you what what I do, and when you can witness what Omar did, how you can have the most troubled children that need the the love and tender support come into a room, and by the end of our presentation, the totally different children. That would be an honour to show you all. Um, and hopefully we can, we can hope come together and stick, make my plans come true of making Deepdale and Preston the, the sort of like life that other people look at and think, wow, they're doing it right and they're doing it well. So, yeah, thank you very much. Thank you very much. You're welcome, Byron. And, thank you. Uh, well done. Well done. Uh, Byron, and I've got many texts here thanking you for the work you are doing, many youngsters, elders as well. And inshallah, at the end, we will have some questions for you as well. And yeah, uh, yeah. you can uh, uh, inform people about this service further. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much for that. Brother Pleasure. Omar, see yourself. Um, now I have got a really trusted friend that I've known for many decades who, who again, his experiences is a counsellor that I turn to when I have young people that are troubled and I'm not a counsellor. This man has gone again like Byron in his own time. Everything that he's put on, all the energy in his time. And this young man has helped a lot of young people, a lot of young people with the daily, daily struggles of life. I want to hand you over to Mr. Najib Shah. Thank you very much, Omar. Uh, like, like Byron, very to be here today. Um, so, assalamu alaikum to everyone. Um, I want to start yeah, off about what trauma is. I'll give you, first of all, a definition of that. Now, um, trauma is the response to a deeply distressing or disturbing event that overwhelms an individual's ability to cope, causes feelings of hopelessness, and diminishes their sense of self and their ability to feel the full range of emotions and experiences. Now, that might sound all confusing to you, but I'm going to break it down. Uh, explain it in the further detail. Okay, there's some common symptoms of feeling trauma is uh, sadness, anger, betrayal, uh, fear, and shame. And trauma can include um, a variety of things can trigger trauma. And, and some of these are, I've listed them here, are being frightened, being under threat, being humiliated, uh, rejected, abandoned, invalidated, unsafe, unsupported. Sometimes you might feel trapped and that can trigger it off, ashamed or powerless. Now, 
trauma can lead to uh, things like um, uh, nightmares, insomnia, uh, difficulty relationships, and um, emotional outbursts. And I hope that when I'm talking about these um, uh, these these um, symptoms, that some of you are recognizing that this is what trauma is, and you can then um, label it to what you're going through if you are going through it. So at least it'll give you some idea. The common physical symptoms can be uh, nausea, uh, dizziness, um, altered sleep patterns, changes in at appetite, and definitely headaches. So um, the psychological disorders uh, that may include PTSD, and uh, the people who are listening now don't know what that is. It is post-traumatic stress disorder. Uh, depression, anxiety, um, and uh, obviously substance abuse problems so you could probably um, be taking some substances so you could probably abuse it if you're going through some kind of trauma so your mind is not able to handle it so you're you're using something else to maybe hide it or to cover it or to maybe to get rid of it so much has left this world and it's a great loss um allah knows best um his parents relatives and uh, family will be struggling with loss and trauma. What support I'm asking is out there for them. That's my question to everyone. Um, so, a family is a cornerstone of a healthy society. One of the main problems is communication. Now, I've heard many families come to me that they don't understand their kids. The kids don't understand the parents because of different times and eras and so on. But the main problem in most relationships is communication. Um, so there should be no judgment and parents need to be more transparent. So for example, I'm going to give an example here where I wrote this down. If a child is getting bullied, wherever he's getting bullied, is his first point of contact should be his parents. So the child can feel safe, um, valued, trusted. Does this happen? If not, why? So I'm asking the parents, why does your children not come to you and talk to you about their issues? So if you really think about it, it's a breakdown of communication. My role as a counsellor, therapist and a mentor is to help support people suffering from mental health issues. So for example, I've talked about um, anxiety, depression, um, suicidal harm, self-harm, bereavement, and etc. So the kind of therapy that I offer is talking therapy that involves um, a, a trained therapist listening to you and helping you find ways to deal with emotional issues. Okay, so my, my job and my purpose is to enable the client to explore aspects of their life and feelings uh, by talking openly and freely. Talking like this is a rarely uh, possible with is rarely possible with family and friends who are likely to be emotionally involved and have opinions and biases that may affect the discussion. Talking to a counselor like myself gives the clients opportunity to express to express difficult feelings such as anger, uh, resentment, guilt, fear in a confidential environment. So um, Everything that's discussed with me, everything that's shared with me stays confidential, stays with me. And many of our Asian people or minority of people think that uh, when you do go to counsel, and if he's Muslim or if he's Asian, he's going to tell the next person because that's what we do. We like to talk about other people, so it's well known. So I want to make it clear that that doesn't happen. Um, so what I do is good counselling um should reduce the client's confusion allowing them to make an effective decisions leading to positive changes in their attitude or behavior so in the process of counseling what tends to happen is um through the change you start changing your mindset and the way of thinking and you realize you're starting to realize your faults and um, the kind of things that you're going wrong in life and then you really think about that and then that helps you then make changes in your life because life in general in my opinion you're always learning about yourself all the time and um, throughout your life you'll be learning more and more things about you 
The ultimate aim uh, of counselling is to enable the client to make their own choices, reach their own decisions and act upon them. Um, so what I want to say to people out there is don't feel ashamed. Um, talk and you'll see and you'll feel the benefits, inshallah, definitely. And I've seen this throughout my whole work. So I want to talk a little bit about the community. So I want to ask the public or the people who are listening, what do we do to help members of our community? How do we support them? Or how do we help them express emotions in a safe place? I don't think there's anywhere that we can go for that. Omar, where is there? Where, where can I go as a, a 48 year old man? Can I, um, can I, because uh, obviously I, t I couldn't agree with it. Any, I, agree, I couldn't agree any more of what you're saying. Um, yeah. I, I didn't mention before, but you know, um, I have PTSD um, yeah. and numerous failed suicide attempts, um, and things like victim support is what saved my mother's life when she oh, unfortunately definitely. went down that rabbit hole. Um, but we are actually, and this is this is why this is why things like this are amazing. We are actually opening a trauma informed peer support group at the rest of North End through the JJ effect, which is going to be free, and everyone can come from any corner of anywhere throughout any community in Preston where everything will be conf confidential, you know, kept secret and stuff like that, like you said. But this is a key thing. I'm actually looking at the moment for people to come and host them um, due to how busy we are. Now, the, we've actually just changed our mind and we're thinking about with how successful the JJ Effect Youth Club has been at Smart Fitness in Deepdale, that we are actually going to host it there. Um, and I'm thinking about that would be the next step is what days we can do it. Now, it would be an absolute honour if someone like yourself could... Um, come because it will be a premises it'll be free of charge the facilities are all there for everyone to use we've got the trauma support wall with all the contact details on i'm just missing the final piece of the puzzle which will be someone like yourself with with all the experience to come in and, and, and do that definitely that's brilliant i want to be, you know, out and give my time and at the end of the day what we need to do as a community as the yeah. deal as press we come together we need to yeah, Brother Najif, sorry to interrupt. I would like to just add there. I think what the Byron's point is very, very important, my yeah. respected listeners, is that uh, basic and Brother Najif, that look, we have to, this is a not a one community's issue, not Asian community issue or white community. It's all our yeah. community issue. Mm -hmm. John Wall is our child. You know, Salmad is our child. Yeah, and like we say, we we from Deep Dell. We, I, I went to Moor Park as well, by So <laughs> basically, you know, we're all from here, and we all want to do the right thing. I think what is lacking is building the bridges, and that's when you know, like I've got a question just for. I know I'm going to save that for after, but it's, it's a, you know, it's related to this topic because this respected elder thanks you, Byron, a lot, and he's amazed by your work. Calls you a true hero. You're not just a hero of your mother; you're a hero for us all, and you all. Are, Right. And, and and the thing is, he's highlighted this very vocal, uh, respected elder, is a supporter of me, mother. And he said, you know, about this youth club, we, we don't know. So, you know, things like that. And I think it's the, getting the information. Our brother Omar is doing a fantastic work. He's been trying to get this information about this youth work. COVID is slowing things a bit down, but you can see it's all happening even during lockdown. So yeah, we've just got, we've got you've got to fight for what you believe in. Don't get me wrong, it's not easy. I get I've had death threats. I've people I woke up yesterday on my birthday to messages disrespecting the JJ effect to myself. I woke up this morning with more disrespectful messages to myself from another company. Um, it's not easy, but I feel like I was saying this to Omar all my other day. Out of all the stuff I've done this year. For me, on a personal level, which sometimes we do have to think about ourselves to help others uh, for our own mental well-being, is that this meeting is probably, hence why I've set up the signs and my lighting, I've put a lot of effort in. This this is quite a very significant time to, to be to be here, to be sat here on the seat speaking to you, sir. you people. Exactly what you just said. There is always going to be that stigma that we can never shake away of why can't that community mix with this community? But if we can, for example, use the trauma support group and have, for example, I know I'm only wishful thinking here, but eventually, let's say, Sarmed's family come and then the Heighton family 
then yeah, other yeah. people might may follow. Um, and then with the you know, got the experience of what you've got. I think I think you know what I mean. I think I think that is a big thing crossing a bridge, but I do think this is the first step in um, yeah. that process. Thank you very much. Yeah. We we'll go back to Najib. Sorry, Najib, brother. No, Najib, okay. we took some of your time. But you're highlighting the services which are needed and which you are offering as well. Yeah, so it, it, it's good to do that. It's good to look at points and then talk a little bit more about them because then we can um, let the audience and the public know what is out there, what we're trying to do. And this is yeah. for them, you know, it's for their support. So I was talking about how, um, how the counselling system works and how if a person is being heard, they'll feel good about themselves instead of offering a solution or a fix. And then what we tend to do a lot is we're talking to someone and someone is telling us their problems to us. We don't listen. We are always thinking about the fix, or how to offer a solution. So the listening skills, I think, are are really slacking and we need to learn how to do that again. And we need to build Definitely. resilient families and communities to be open and compassionate. So I, need to, I want to talk a little bit about children and what how in my opinion what we should do and we need to become more closer to our children and what that means is to understand to speak to share to communicate with them and to respect them like we treat our friends i think sometimes i see that people are treating their friends better than their kids so there's a big 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 problem there i don't know why that's happening but it's, it's for them to have a think about we need to build a strong bond with our kids um, and some of us are disconnected with our children. And also, I want to throw this out there is why does, do we mix Islam and culture? So I want people to have a think about that and think, why do we do that as parents? So they know what I mean. I'm not going to go into it. Uh, this is where sometimes most of the problems I think come from. And a few words at the end is I want to say that please invest in your children. It's not about money. Um, so what I'm trying to say is there's a lack of investment for children. We're not investing in all children. Either parents are, are busy working double shifts and earning money and status. And the main concern is create the ideal house and businesses and etc. So we need to stop that and we need to focus more on what more on the future generation because they're going to be here. So we need to teach them, show them, show them love and be compassionate and um and caring towards them and ultimately respect them. So I'm available to speak with anyone. My contact details uh, are with Cameron. Counseling can be done by either telephone, Zoom, whichever is best. We all need to start talking more into bearing our problems and thinking that they're going to go away because Definitely. that's about mental health or, or any kind of depression, anxiety, brushing the carpet. It's not going to work. Because it only worked for a little while and then I saw this again. So it needs to be addressed. It's been a pleasure speaking to you all and take on board what I've said and what I've shared. And uh, thank you for the thank time. You, uh, we've got some questions for you. That'll be after Brother uh, Omar speaks about his work and uh, how this has affected our community and what should be done. Thank you, thank yeah. you Brother Omar, for organizing this. Uh, yeah, well, well just, just today, I've just sat here and over the weekend, spent time with um, Byron and Najib, and look what we've come up with. We've come up with a, a place where young people can go and feel safe, somewhere where they can chill out, relax, be with their mates, somewhere where people will understand them. The way Byron delivers, the way Najib talks to young people, the way we work with young people, honestly, this is absolutely an amazing opportunity where we can utilise the services that Obviously, Byron is running, what Najib is doing, how we connect with young people, and we will take this further. We will be supporting you as the JJ effect and supporting it as a, as a community. Because as Cam, Brother Cameron is saying, it doesn't matter if you're black, white, mixed race, Asian, there are children. In the 25 years I've been doing this, and I was counting it yesterday, and I, I honestly, it, it really, really hit me hard when Byron was there talking about his brother and his PTSD. This is a ma young man talking about, P he's a physically strong man, but talking to young people about his 
mental well-being really really shook the crowd yesterday people we were all looking at him when he went quiet and it was difficult for him to get the words out and I, I was watching the young people and then young people were so focused and thought what a role model this guy can talk about his feelings so can i this is yeah. what we need to do this is the work that i am trying to get our community to open up we need more mentors black white asian mixed race like byron said it's deep Dell. we're all from deep Dell. it doesn't matter if we're from deep Dell, callan fishwick larchy stuff it doesn't matter we want to bring people together and mentor them and this is what we need in our community where more of our parents we kind of take the lead and show them how to work with their youngsters because there is an issue there is an issue and we all know the issue and at the heart of it is drugs and yeah. a lot a lot of drugs are on our street and we have byron here whose mum went to school with me and that's how close we are connected and yet in a weird way the almighty has worked his, his ways where we've come together as a community the loss yeah. of his brother has presented an opportunity for us to work closer closer use the skills and trauma and experience this is man has lived experience and we have many more young people, as we all know, Brother Cameron, we all know, who are out there right now, who are disengaged, who are not in our community, who are pushed away. They, all they're lacking is that little bit of love. We have the community centre, and Byron is uh, he's not kidding when he says he wants to build the biggest and the best community centre. I went there, and when you go to a community, and I've been around for many, many this guy has got a massive double fridge full of drinks for the kids. Wow. He brought chips for the kids yesterday out of his own pocket. Well done. And the kids were sat there and they were, and I looked at them and I watched, I do a lot of observation and I watch how the connection was. And they were doing all the gym work and they were and they were a very lively group. But you could have dropped a pin and heard it when Byron was speaking. Because this boy is put this young man this young man has put his life on hold and he is doing something and Najif you're doing the same I'm doing the same we need more young people in the 20s to come forward let's train them up to be the future let's teach our young people that walking around with a knife right is not the right thing to do sitting on a street corner shutting little 10 pound bags out this is not the future Let's no. inspire them to be better. Let's inspire them to see better. We're all too ready to create a misery map. You know, everything's down, everything's bad, everything's got. Deepdale has got so many beautiful things. You know, like I said to Barry yesterday, Deepdale is the heartbeat of this city. Mm. It's the capital of this city. Yeah. We've got so many good things that are happening. So many good, and when we also, the bad things, will only carry on being bad things when we as good people stand there and let it happen yeah. we can't carry on allowing this to happen and together as a unit we can go to the local councillors who i know are very very supportive yeah. who will support us when people see this video and then they see the four of us on this video and think that's a weird mix i'm just going to watch it just to see what what's going on here yeah. you know, why is this guy with the tattoos surrounded with people with big beards what yeah. you know that's this conversation starter and that's yeah. what we want we want them to talk and see that we can't lose another child no. and you know what my hand is on my heart hard it's only a matter of time before we lose another young one. it's only a matter of time byron like you said over christmas took four machetes off the streets of detail wow four machetes them machetes could have been the end of someone's life and young people just need to be heard let's not just paint a picture that it's all about young people a lot of these young people suffer from trauma at home what yeah. they witness at home yeah. the domestic violence the alcohol yeah. the drugs misuse yeah all this is boiling up all this is boiling up 
the victim in this murder in detail, and just, I don't know, I don't want to speak out of turn, but like Byron, Byron's also a victim of John Joe's murder. His mum is also a victim. Yeah. But then also the perpetrators, their families who've lost their sons to go to prison, they're suffering in silence. We need to reach out to them. And I love the way you brought that, if the high ends and the family who's just had a loss, if we can bring them together. And if we can show that we're here together, this is the answer. This is the solution. We can't wait for local government to come and tell us how to do, run our lives. We know what the problems are. And in short, a lot is going to be other talks in other mosques that we're trying to arrange. I think next time, Cameron, we go down to the gym down at Digda where JJ Effect is, and we have take our young people down there yeah. and invite parents to go down there. Honestly, Thank you. Yeah, I never felt yeah. I, I never felt that. one little bit of animosity or people looking at me straight. I was welcomed, sat down with everybody, talking to the you know he had. Uh, the gainer young lady gainer and the guy uh who was speaking with you i forgot his the young man who was with you oh daniel daniel yeah and the connection they've got we've got great great workers out there great youth workers and i know that at the moment this topic is really hot but we're not going to give up we're going i've been doing 20 25 years every day to late at night every day constantly and we are going to carry on and all i can say to our host today uh, me and Manda, and is to thank you to re for reaching out and inviting you know we're connecting with the people yeah, yeah. we're honored we're, honored we're honored seriously you have blessed us so you know we're honored you've come on and like i said at the early uh, at the introduction you are our heroes and we need to build these heroes there are many out there who are doing this work but yeah. it's just coming together and and you know it, some of the I questions to touch on that, Cameron. you were just saying sorry to disturb you there's many youth workers out there there's i know i don't mind mentioning Preston united there's obviously a youth development program there's a couple yeah. of other brothers doing some youth work they all need to come together and work come together, together collectively we need, so that definitely. we can address issues that are going on and support each other it's not about that's your group and that's my group we need to come no. together and that's important want. Yeah, I think I, I think a good thing as well is that what you've all said all, all interlinks and it's weird because I never get shocked anymore. I've seen that many young people and heard that many stories and and obviously when you see what I've seen with my own eyes, you know, when you witness someone dying, it changes you and the way you think. But one of the most creepiest and most um, amazing things that a child ever said to me was uh, a six-year-old at a talk I did in Thameside, Manchester. And I was talking about why people shouldn't be segregated and people shouldn't treat each other different. Because um, when we do primary schools, we, we take a bit of a different approach. And this child put his hand up and I said, OK, go on then. Why shouldn't we treat each other different? And he, he, I'm getting goosebumps saying this. And he said um, that no matter who you are, age, sex, um, or, or wherever you come from, we all cut, bleed and die the same. That was a six-year-old child. How, how and, and even, and there's, grow, there's grown adults that don't understand that concept, but oh, six-year-old Only if we did. Only if we did. And I, I'm sure with this program and the program and the works you guys are doing, it will make a change. And he has made change. Like you said, you took machetes off the street. You've helped people come off drugs, come out towards this way. So, I mean, in the questions, you will see the, you know, how much people need this. So there is a big need, there's a big cry, but I think it's sometimes we don't have, like what Brother Najib said, that, you know, the communication, we don't know how to, who to approach. Sometimes the adults are suffering uh, of what the youngsters are doing. And same thing, like youngsters are suffering because what's happening, the trauma at home. So, you know, it, it, it's, it's, this is very important. And this is all the work, that's why I've titled this, you know, help us save lives and stop knife crime. Because as Brother Omar, I recited the Holy Quran and translated it, and one part of it says that to kill one human being is like to kill humanity. And to save a life is like saving humanity. And why, when you look at the scholars explain it in detail, that basically what happens is why are you saying all humanity? Because what leads to then is revenge. 
And then if it was wars, just for example, country with country, family with family, feuds, so, 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 that's why end up that humanity suffers. So this Never is ended. that way, as you said. So, I mean, you reflect, I mean, the question, there's quite a few questions. So obviously we've got our respected uh, scholar coming joining us from Bradford, who's doing amazing work. He's not just a scholar. In fact, I personally see him as a youth worker as well. He works much uh, daily. Uh, uh, going up and down the country online during COVID. Bradford, as you know, there's big troubles in Bradford as well. And he's yeah. dealing with his brother. They opened the Al Hickam Institute, working with the youngsters. So he knows he's come from the streets like we are. We've all come from the streets. You know, my, yeah. somebody sees it with a big beer, whatever, but we're from Deepdale. And and uh, we've been through, uh, as Brother Omar Najib, you all know, we've been through yeah. a lot, all of us. And if we can, and there's people listening out there. If you can come behind Byron, come join Omar and Najif, then basically that will start building teams. And this communication, yeah. what the questions I've received, will be answered automatically. So if, if that's no, okay, no, we can go to the questions or oh, yeah, we got, yeah, yeah, go to the questions, yeah. Okay, so we, basically this this in itself, Byron's has answered it. However, that communication is missing. So basically, to Brother Omar and to Byron, uh, is basically saying, do you feel the youth act activities offered are enough in our communities to deal with uh, this kind of uh, Right. I, I've, I've said this again to Omar yesterday. The problem is with uh, people like myself and everyone involved in this group is that you'll get people that will say we need to help everyone. Yeah. Unfortunately, we have to be realistic so that we can give the people that we do have the honour of helping our 100% uh, effort. So like yesterday, I, I bought chippy for everyone. That was nearly £50. I, I've, I've not worked at the moment because of COVID. You know, it's things like that in the facilities. Yeah. Hence why our, yeah, hence why our youth programme is going to be developed in a way that it's only accessible for them eight weeks to the specific children that get um brought by the parents or 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 brought from police forces or, or the mosque community or anywhere like that that way we can give them children the 100 percent effort that that child de uh, deserves give them all the relevant training and then after the eight weeks bring more people in as well i found in in the past with youth clubs and youth services is that you can go to a youth club on day one OK, there will be brand new Xboxes and Playstations everywhere, which we all know are very expensive and funding doesn't come along, you know, and when funding does as well, it doesn't go very far. Then you've got brand new pool tables, brand new TVs. Before you know it, and I've worked with police officers across the country in Thameside and they've said to me face to face value that youth clubs on day one to day, let's say 12 months later, let's say day 360, they are not the same building. They are destroyed. They become a hub for violence. There's even been places in uh, Birmingham, it was, where a young child got stabbed to death in a youth club because the other gang knew where that child was. And that's what I want to take out of the picture. I want to take out the chance for self-destruction, violence and, and misery and just the waste of funds. That way we can put 100% into the community for every eight-week programme that we do. Uh, and that's my but that's my belief on it. Obviously, I'm open to people saying I'm doing it wrong or maybe this will work better. But from my experience, if we can give a child 100 percent rather than 50, we're, we're, we're another 50 percent more likely to actually make a successful change in that young person's life. Yeah, definitely. I, I mean, there's another question here. Uh, and again, this is one is uh, to our counseling brother uh, Najif. And to Byron as well, in fact, that obviously, like, uh, you know, uh, Brother Omar said, that in itself, your family are victims, you know, it affected you. And obviously, from tragedy, you have bought something positive. But yeah. not many times that happens. In case no. sometimes it goes worse. Right. Yeah. So there's a question that, uh, which I think, uh, as a community as a whole, whether it's the mosque, faith uh, organization, churches, what at temples, whatever, and also the police, and then the community organizations like Deep Dog Community Association is working with us. So uh, basically, as a, the question is that, do you feel there is enough sport 
well, victims and friends and the perpetrators, like Brother Omar said, that you know, the people who are the 16, 17 year old kids as well. So uh, then the, the, the mothers, parents, fathers, brothers like yourself, uh, you know, uh, Samad's brother, you know, and on that side and the other side, the perpetrator's mother. So, you know, uh, basically, is there enough support out there? Uh, I think uh, uh, if Najif can highlight that first and then we can take Byron's view on that for victim support, because obviously you've been there at that place. Yeah, personally, I, I don't think there's much support out there. Now, there, there could be some um, places, organisations that, that do offer that, or, or somebody could signpost me even, but I was thinking about how is the family going to be supported, like the father, the mother. I mean, personally, I know the father really well. I've known him for years, and I've been yeah. offering that support. But what about people who I don't know? What about people yeah. I can't get in contact with? How can I offer support to them? And bereavement is something that doesn't have a timeline. It can be, you know, just to give an example, um, I, I was uh, counseling a woman once, and her husband had died five years ago, and she wanted therapy after that. So there's nothing out there, I think, especially in our community, in our Preston, that is a... I mean, maybe I'm speaking out loud here. There should be a hub or there should be a place where women can get access, men can go, teenagers can go. But we don't have that. We've got so much funding out there. We're not invested in our own community, in our own press, then because we need this. Of course. So, Definitely. So, yeah. Thank you I for that. I, I totally agree because I, 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 I must apologise because every time I speak, it's like I'm speaking just about myself. But via no, this... No. That, Via this pro, via this uh, platform with you, you people, my experience sadly is my is my work, um, yeah. and I totally agree again. Victim support, right, saved my mum's life, and that's a, another a, a bit of pill I've got to swallow. I would pick the phone up at three o'clock in the morning, and I'd say, and I'd know my heart would sink because my mum never rings me at that time in the morning, and I'd say hello, and you know, oh my, you went to school, my mum, and she'd say to me, Byron. Can I kill myself? And you know, oh God, I got, I got, I got chalked up the saying it. Then, do you know what I mean? It, it and I, I, I've had that, I've had that from day one when John Joe was stabbed the first time to yeah. weeks ago. Weeks ago, I have. It was only what three weeks ago. My mum walked in crying, and she said, "Was I a good enough, mother?" She always blames herself. And then with with me beating suicide, but then it's all right me saying, oh, I beat suicide. I didn't just beat suicide. I then turned to heavily drug abuse and I was heavily dependent on drugs pretty much every day for the, a, a, a good four or five years. It's only just now I've come out the other side. But hence why the trauma support group from the JJ effect is already ready to go. I've done the training, it's ready to go. It's just, unfortunately, I've become so busy the the next step like i've just said before would be to find someone who would bring some of the people in and we will offer that as a free service it's sort of gonna replicate victim support but instead of it being a phone call i truly believe um in people connecting like, like i i feel like we're connecting now but if we was all in the same room with each other, we'd be connecting on a far greater a greater level now the only benefit again to repeat myself here to this phone call is that i've now managed to meet someone who's got the vast experience and not only that we out sounding um uh i don't know what the word i'd use for it but we're out signing to like i'm being disrespectful but you are from the right culture also so we yeah. can also break down that barrier. If we've got a group of white people coming to my my trauma therapy group, because one person's lost a son, one person lost a dad through uh, knife crime, and so on, it might end up spilling, and the, the another community might not want to join. But if we yeah. can start yeah. this as a joint yeah. community yeah. thing, as a free service, I've already got premises lined up at Smart Fitness. I feel we feel like we're not just going to open the door; we're going to kick it down. Um, and yes, so so it's right. It's, this is connected with the small fitness. Uh, the yeah, fitness yeah. Just, smart, just, smart, uh, where is it based? Smart fitness is based just behind uh, Preston Prison. Um, there is a big, be new, beautiful building that's just been built. Um, where all the people go for the weddings. Do you know where that is? 
Yes. Yeah. yes, yes. What, what's that building called? It's like oh, it's London, London Road. Road. It used to be London Road uh, Banquet Hall. No, no, no. Isn't it? no, no, no. no. It's, uh, no. Behind the prison, no. banqueting, go full spacing, the banqueting hall. Banqueting hall. Yeah, and yeah. you know where Campbell Street is? Campbell Street. Yeah, it's yeah. opposite the um, thingy social club. Okay, yeah. so we've been reporting this. Uh, it's, a little unit. it's a little unit in Campbell Street. We're next to the wacky warehouse. And okay. Right. Yes. It might, yeah. it, might look, it might look small, but when you went when you went in, it is a fully fledged gym. You know, a proper big and a really good. Like I said, fully. It's got the gym there. It's got the youth club there. It's got big screens there. But the most important thing is, it's got people from the streets who know how to talk to young people, who know how to talk to their community, and. I think what we will be doing is through social media, we'll be going to obviously with lockdown at the minute, we have to be careful how we do it. But yes, yes. we can promote it. It's on Campbell Street, not the wacky warehouse. It is literally in detail, two minutes away from where all the trauma is, all the troubles are. Yeah. And honestly, it's going back central to, yes. going back to is there enough happening? Young people <laughs> Oh, sorry. Uh, sorry, this, uh, but, uh, but, uh, just, uh, sorry to interrupt, but uh, conscious of time, uh, you're, we're taking a lot of your time as well, and there's a few questions. So what we'll do is we will advertise this place with the address, and uh, Brother Najif, we will advertise your services. You've sent me your card, and everyone knows Omar. And uh, I'll tell you the truth, Byron, I didn't know of you as, uh, you know, the work you've been doing, but my, my son told me. You know, I said, oh, Byron's going to be on. And he said, yeah, Byron's a great person. And the, the thing is, I said, why don't you tell this to your friends and to at home? You know, everyone knows Byron. So obviously we didn't. <laughs> <laughs> but when I looked at the work and I saw your mum's comment, you know, when she said, you know, the victim is not just the person who just lost his life. Of course, yeah. George had a, a baby boy at that time. Uh, you know, I hope and pray he's well and, you know, he goes on the straight path and carries and building a legacy for his father uh, with his uncle. So basically, uh, you know, but what your mom said was, she said, you know, it wasn't John Joe who died. It was half of me dead as well. I, I saw that comment, you know, at that time, because obviously it's quite still fresh when you look at it, because my friend was, uh, uh, is a, he, Kasim, you know, Kasim Leif, you know, Najif, and his yeah. niece was, uh -huh. Apparently, with John Joe at the time walking down, and you know she saw that what happened, and he was saying that she's just having nightmares. He's, you know, gone really, you know, quiet and things like that. So obviously, uh, it, it is a big thing, you know, with for the victim sport. So we'll be promoting that. And some questions are related. Where is it based? There's another question here, Omar. I want you to quickly touch on this. It's basically the same. That sometimes it feels like you know the services are only working with good children. This is a, this can be said on the both sides, you know, because some say why is the good children not being rewarded with youth club, and others are saying why is it that the good children are the ones who are been, who have the work and have access to. But obviously, uh, Byron here just proved us that you know it doesn't matter where you come from, what your background is, you know. And I'll, I'll be honest, uh, Brother Omar knows, you know, the way I lived my life, you know, ended up being a heroin addict, you know. And what saved me was, again, for from the, the local mosque, the imam, you know, or, or a bigger group like Dawit Islami. There are institutes, there are organizations. To turn, I can remember uh, Molana this side from Frenchwood, 20, 40 years, 30 years ago, sorry, 25 years ago, he took 40 uh, youngsters on a, on a spiritual camp to Palestine and then uh, Saudi Arabia. After them, 40 people, you know, at least 35 quit drugs and started doing work like that violence. But this is 25 years ago, people did the work, you know, and uh, Omar has seen that kind of situation as well, yeah. where people have come and turned around. So people who say, oh, you know, it's only for the good children. No, it works with both sides. Yeah. Good children need to be saved and uh, safeguarding to not to access that or have them points but on the same note this lady is asking that why is there not that much work going on with single moms or uh, smaller groups 
in our yeah. community, such as the Kurdish or the Iraqi or the Eastern European, our brothers who have joined us now. You know, they, their children, the first generation is now, you know, growing up in this country. So uh, what do you say to that, Brother Omar? Why is it uh, not? Um, um, unfortunately, there is a lack of communication again. There is a lot of activity going on. And, uh, and I believe there's a sister who's asking about ladies only and girls only. Yes, the right, there's that as well. The, right. the, the only way to get this message across is through mums. Yes. And if we have sisters listening today who want, to, are, turn, many who want to join up and support us, it takes a village to bring a child up. Yeah. It's the responsibility of everybody. They are our children. Yeah. And if we can bring sisters forward then days are gone obviously we're in line with islamic law and the way we work we understand we yes and then we will bring and i'm sure a jj will be open for sisters to even if they're wearing a headscarf or wearing a cap it doesn't matter if they've got something special in their heart that they can share and support that young person we will be duty bound and not only Islamic bound, but duty bound to bring forward and sisters to come forward and talk and yeah. chat to each other. Because children uh, talk to children, and children will talk to other children and say, Oh, have you yeah. been down to there, that youth club? It was really yes. good. I got to learn about it. Like you said, your son didn't share that with you. We need yeah. to look at how we are yeah. talking to our young people, how they can share this. But if there are sisters out there who are willing to come and support, there are many courses. If you've got a strength, if you work in a school, if you work in a setting where you have experience, please come forward. Please. Yeah. We we are brothers. We are brothers. We want to work. We don't have the answers. We don't have all of them. We have part of them. And we want to encourage more women to come. Yesterday, I was with Tyrone's, uh, was it your neighbor? The lady who was at the, at the sessions yesterday? Yeah. I forgot her name. I forgot her name, Byron. Oh, again, oh, and again. Gainer. And honestly, the way to connect, listen, we will do whatever it takes to get the solution out there. And the good kids and the bad kids, there's no, no such thing as the bad kids. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, last of all, one thing I will say, though, as well, is don't forget, this youth club has only been set up within 14, within 14 days. And we, wow. are, at, we are at capacity now. So don't forget, in the future... As you're just saying, then the Asian community, the women wanting to help and do things. But I, I always say, a man needs a woman. Every man and every boy needs a woman. And I know, and it, and to be fair, anyone who says otherwise isn't a real man. Um, you know, we need women as much as they need us, if not more. And in the future, don't forget, my plans are not to have smart fitness. I want a building that's that big that we can have a hundred kids at a time and then the amount of people i'm going to need help from is going to grow so fast that we can get these people coming in and and spreading their, their awareness i think three of the children that come now are from deepdale and the mums come in yesterday as you saw oh my we're giving them the bags of food from the asian community and it was so it was so nice and we're all talking and you know what i mean so big things we need to take big steps that, we get we definitely just uh, another couple of questions because we've got our respected scholar joining us soon for bradford uh just uh, you know these youngsters ask this question a lot you know because you see posters and they say you know cowards carry knives uh other than that they say if you're gonna this is uh, which basically back all this off that if you're gonna carry a knife you probably you probably be used against you or you'll be in a knife crime so but the thing is there's youngsters who say we're not into drugs we're not into anything but there's knives out there so i have to safeguard myself uh Byron, you could answer that that you know i have to safeguard myself uh and i have to carry a knife what, what can we say to them what's the answer you I've, 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 I've actually done studies with some of the biggest universities in in in, in the uk and I actually i'm not allowed to mention the university's names uh, because the studies haven't been released yet and one of the studies is that how signs like only sorry my language only pussies carry knives or only yeah. colors yeah. carry knives actually it's been proven to make situations yeah. worse um, put the knives down pick gloves up 
yeah. that also yeah. has been proven. It's been proven to make things worse because it gives a stigma that switching a violent act to another violent act, the way you go about it is the correct way. And you say that the gym can save you, boxing and the people that you meet can save you. Yeah. To say to a child, Sometimes I'm quite brutally honest, and especially when I speak to these kids, and it, there is no there is no wrong or right answer. But yeah, from my yeah. from my opinion and my experience, I will just say to them: Would you rather be sat in your room playing your Xbox on social media with the, all the wonderful things that this generation can that have got? But we didn't when we yeah, were kids. Yeah, we had rope in the Moor Park and the duck pond. Now yeah. kids have got they've got the planet in the hand. Right, so if it's that dangerous out there and they feel that their life is at risk to the point where they have to carry a knife, I do say to the kids that, would you rather be at home or would you rather be in a box? And at the end of the day, dead bodies, yeah, yeah, dead bodies don't get second chances. So no. there is no really excuse, a real excuse. No. It's just a fact of, of don't carry a knife. If, you're, if you're feeling that much in danger, stay in and reap the benefits of the 21st century. Or change your friends, change your friends yeah. even. That's what I think we're going to say that our respected scholars and Omar and yourselves are trying to create a safe company so you don't need to put, put yourself in that position that you yeah. are in danger of knife crime. If you lay low mm -hmm. and you're doing good things or you're in yeah. a good environment, you won't be recognised. But on yeah. I mean, it, it's, very, it's, it's very sad that we have to stay that maybe laying low or staying no, indoors. No, 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 I, get, no, I agree. You know I, I agree. I agree what you're saying, but it's just that sometimes we have to admit that times are that difficult and that bad that sometimes we do have to do things that we shouldn't yeah. really be having to do, but we have to to stay alive. Yeah, we have to. If, you, if yeah. that is the case, change the friendship. I think that is the uh, couple. Another from our uh, uh, sporter wiki, uh, she said, you know, about these youth services, uh, there is no youth service in Deepdale that can children. And obviously that's just been answered. There is new services and we will promote it. We will get the mosques that go to do announcements of this service, yeah. uh, you know, uh, and uh, of uh, Byron's uh, services, which they are offering. We will promote it. We've got the Community Association doing the work. We've got uh, Preston Muslim Forum doing the work. We've got uh, uh, Fishwick Rangers. All these organizations, we will try to get that message out to you that there is all these things. You just need to get there and access it. And, and we'll talk to our local scholars and our local scholars, they will talk on this later on. They will be joining us shortly. Uh, uh, sorry, I'm just going to move on to a couple of other questions before that. So, yeah, so that one's answered, Ricky, you know, about the youth services. There are many. We just need to get it promoted and out there to you. Uh, we will do that. And we all uh, commit to that today. And uh, there sorry, is... come on. Can I just mention something before you ask the last question? A brother of mine is a, a fellow uh, counsellor mentioned that there's a counselling available for 16 to 19 year olds at the Haven in Preston. I don't know if you know where that is. So yeah, if you can put that together, uh, brother Najib, sorry to drop, then send it I'll, to me. I'll uh, send and, it on and... the group uh, WhatsApp group. I've already put it on. Yeah, here, so... yeah you're on the group. But we will yeah. promote it through Twitter and social media and everything, okay. and our websites as well. Uh, so, you know, this is a question uh, which uh, obviously is a bit political, but obviously it's asked, so I'm going to ask it, uh, Brother Omar, what do you think of this one, that why is there a high knife crime in labour wards, uh, what are Preston Labour doing to tackle this? I think, like I said, this is a uh, basic as well, I don't know if it's just Labour's problem, uh, what do you think? No, uh, let's just get this myth out there, right? I've spoken to families in very rich areas whose kids go to private school and their parents have rung me to say there's a knife missing from the kitchen. This happens anywhere, anywhere and everywhere. No way. You know, from rich to poor, it's unfortunately what happens is it gets highlighted in the poorer communities a lot quicker. Yeah, there's a lot quicker. It's not it, ha it can happen anywhere. Yeah. Nice one, and so Byron will back me up. You'll have kids that are from rich areas, private school educated, who feel the need to pick up a knife. And it, uh, politically, look, listen, we've got really good counsellors, local detail counsellors who are doing their bit. And me and Byron were in a meeting with counsellors, yes. and we will make sure that every counsellor, every counsellor is aware of what we are doing. This is not political. 
This is about people's lives. It's not politics. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, can I, sorry, can I, Gigi, I was just on the phone then, I'm really sorry, to, uh, the actual no, youth club now, the team have come in, um, a dedicated team has just volunteered to uh, clean the kitchen and put new ut utensils in it, and they're all sat outside the gym. Uh, <laughs> am I okay? Is, is, have I answered enough questions now? I'm really sorry. Yeah, 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 you've yeah. done a great job, and Byron, we will be work, working with you side by side. Yes, so, definitely. Uh, I will be coming down uh, once I get my ramp paid. I'll be coming in a wheelchair. I can't get out of the house. Yeah, so, but I will, uh, and there will be people coming to you, and uh, youngsters like my son, you know, uh, he, you know, he was in his course at uh, the PNE College for football. Yeah. In West, uh, so basically, I've spoken to him and his friends as well, and they'll, you know, he, he could be a, you know, uh, 19 years old, so they can help the younger and help you in this, you know, your your yeah. cause, which is yeah. definitely a saving of a life's cause and is saving humanity. Thank you very much. Yeah. I think I think you. the next step, to, next two steps, if we can, uh, is would be to one for hopefully for me to do show you our work. Um, in a face-to-face -face value, even if that's it, smart fitness, and we stick to all the COVID-19 rules because the gym's big enough, spread everyone out. Hopefully, yeah. maybe if they are ready, um, you can bring uh, to Ahmed's family, and we can bridge that gap. And then the second step would be for if um, if you could um, also play a part in the trauma support group as well. Um, oh, yeah. But I think we can we can we can talk about that in our next meeting. Sorry to interrupt, Byron. Before you go, you know there is a lot because the family had to put a statement out for Salmad's family to say please come because there were some issues about troubles happening between. Yes, yes we had it. We, yeah, I, I, did, I, I, I had yeah. phone calls and I had to tell parents to ring the police. Yeah. Yeah, um, and it's the same. The same as when John Joe died. An eye yeah. for an eye leads a blind community. Um, yeah. Well, your and, message for that, the final message for that, is people who are seeking revenge, or you know, they think that is the legacy forward. I mean, I see a John Joe's legacy in you. So basically, you've changed uh, everything and all this. New. In our faith, is is somebody who starts something good, and then others follow. They, he will get the reward of all those who follow him. So basically, yes. that is how we see it. And, you know, basically on that message about this revenge or, you know, pain and self-harm even people are, you know, doing, you know. So basically, your know, closest friends may look to that. What is your best final message there that we will have to ask one more question to Brother Omar and then yeah, we uh, I, for another respected scholar. Thank I, you very much. I, I, I am I'm living proof that if you dig down, work hard and build up resilience over time, you can accomplish anything. And I've turned my brother's life now into a symbol and into something something amazing. And now my mum can smile again. Um, my brother's son, Taylor, he's nine now. You know, he's always on about like, what I'm doing and stuff like that. At the end of the day, enough people are already suffering. So why would we need to bring any more families into this into this circle? It's it's a weird thing to say, right? But people get confused. Um, they confuse sympathy with empathy, and the problem is once you have actually lost someone through knife crime, knowing that they've intentionally been killed, knowing that their last living moments, what you know, was our worst nightmares. Any parent or is anybody who loves anyone. It's a sort of small circle, only a, a small amount of people enter and the Hatton family are in there, Sarmid's family's in there now. And no one truly understands what it's like until you're in that circle. But the problem is, once you're in it, there's no escaping. My, 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 my pain is the same now as it, as it was day one. The only difference is I've built up enough resilience over the years to be able to use it to our benefit. And I and I but the thing is, is that not everyone is this successful. As Omar saw in the talk, I worked with a woman from London. Her son was killed by a knife crime, and six yeah. months later, she hung herself. But, you know, so not everyone is is lucky enough to be to to, to be born with that that skill set inside them that they don't even know they have until they have to use that skill set. I'm yeah. just very lucky in the Hart and family that we had the support we did and we've come out the other side. So even thinking about revenge 
shouldn't you just shouldn't even be thinking about it it shouldn't even come into the equation because any more pain is just unnecessary and you know we want to make things better not worse the best thing they can do is just praise his life like my like john joe's friends do praise his life do something good with their <laughs> life make him proud and the family has done a great thing and family and friends, you know, they launched an appeal to make some water wells and places in poor countries, you know, where there's no mosques or things like yeah. that, especially water wells. And they started with 5,000 target and mashallah, you know, they have gone past that target, over 11 and a half thousand pound last time I looked. Yeah. And that is the le true legacy. The legacy, what you yeah. agree, that's legacy. Not yeah. smoking a spliff yeah. on behalf or, you know, going and doing harm to somebody else or or you know doing that such thing so you know uh final question i'm uh, sorry about this we're rushing you a bit i know oh, it's you okay it's okay it's okay they can uh, wait they can wait <laughs> uh, this this question is to omar so oh. if you go uh, that's thank you very much i think from this program uh well, we do a program every fortnight different programs i think we will have to bring another program like this and maybe bring more people on and you know uh, Call you again once again and but yeah. the most important thing is let's do a live one like you say at your gym uh, at your yeah. youth club which is yeah. everyone's youth club and let's try yeah. to break the barriers that come together exactly and, 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 and it will be an honor it will be an honor as well because obviously yeah, i know we've all said we've all said it hundred times but yeah. we're all from yeah. deep yeah. so, yeah. so many show, me, show yeah. you all john yeah. joe's yeah. legacy and, it just be, it mean and every yeah. every knife crime victim we will I try to bring the legacy for please. Them. You've got Matt. You've got. We could fill the gym. We've got big enough space to abide by COVID nineteen rules. Um, yeah, let's absolutely. get this penciled in for the next couple of weeks. Within the month, let's just get this done yeah, because we yeah. can't waste any more time. Any yeah, more time, yeah. and sadly, we might have another death. No, yeah. no, definitely. Thank, you. Thank you very much, Brian. And uh, it was a pleasure, uh, everyone. Uh, pleasure. Uh, see you uh, later. Bye bye. Yeah, yeah see you later. Oh, yeah, that was great. Thanks a lot, uh, brother Omar. Uh, obviously, this this question we will ask the respective scholars as well. That our massages, our mosques. Yeah, I know there are some very active scholars, uh, young scholars like Mufti Khalid uh, Molana, who is going to come after uh, our respected uh, Molana uh, Abdul Rasul Aluri Sahib, who wants to work, and they have got the skills and they've got the language and they got the knowledge. So basically, we need to access the book. As a whole, I think there's a question here, which uh, you can finish on this. Our respected Imam is waiting for a couple of minutes, if you can. Uh, are our mosques doing enough? And is there a need now to, to a mosque to build a hub of uh, same services which are offered? Can I just uh, say something? No, our mosque, all mosques, all, I want to all say mosques. that. That's all mosques. Mosques. Sorry, our mosques. I mean, all through the country yeah. uh, and even yeah. in the world. Yeah, but in a sense, that, like we say, with less focus on our as, a, as this now, yeah. So like Byron saying, the weird from beef doll. So uh, I mean, but I know Najif, you're quite vocal on this that we need to do more. Definitely, we all need to do more. Yeah, yeah. I'm very vocal on it. Sorry, can, I, yeah, I, I know, yeah. I know. And, and we are trying, and we will. I don't want to anybody. I don't want to rock any boats. <laughs> Yeah, so I think uh, final word from Brother Omar, and we conclude. Uh, or you can stay on and listen to the Imam, and you know afterwards you can carry on talking to us. Yeah, so Brother Omar, you conclude with that, and then we can get the Imam yeah. someone in, in the next couple of minutes because he's got a class uh, at seven o'clock. So obviously he, he needs to give his message and then uh, go to a class. He does great work, Imam Adil from Bradford. Uh, sorry, yeah, so a couple of minutes on that, uh, uh, Brother Omar. If you conclude uh, the, the need uh, of mosques all over the country, especially our local mosque here, to come together, stand behind people like Byron, yourself, and what is the need? What do you feel? Uh, look, like everything else out there, there's everybody moans about, everybody moans when they see nothing good happening. But behind the scenes, there is a lot of mosques who are doing a lot of good work. Who are a lot of imams who are so going out there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I will that down, even during COVID. So, but we need to push positive for the ones who are a bit behind. Uh, thank you very much for that because I've got to give the imam because he's here. Yeah. So, and obviously they are our scholars. So we've yeah. got to put them both there. Thank you very much. Thank and you. Gonna, uh, if you can arrange that at the gym, like what yeah. John was saying, we will support yeah. you and we'll be there. 
you know, thank you very much, Najif, mate. Uh, uh, you know, a lot of all your, your efforts, all of you. I mean, inshallah. You know, um, we if we the work together, if we inshallah. work together, a lot of changes can happen, but we have That's to work right. together. That's if we can do it, we, we can all do it. Thank you very much. Uh, we do have our next guest, uh, Imam Adil Shazad from Bradford. Uh, uh, if you've got any questions, we got some questions for Imam Sab as well. Uh, first of all, uh, Shoeba, if you can put the uh, great Imam on. Okay. Mashallah. <laughs> Azrat, uh, first of all and foremost, I apologize for the delay, but we had an extra guest, as you might have heard, John Doe, uh, who got killed. His brother is doing fantastic work, working with uh, all communities. So we have to give him a little bit of time. Uh, I apologize for uh, Mazrat, Azrat, our uh, time, Leah. It's okay. Uh, it's okay. Obviously, uh, uh, you've been doing this work. We've, you've come to Preston many times. Uh, we are very uh, grateful and appreciate the work you're doing in Bradford and uh, respected Imam Asim Saab as well, and all the scholars across the country. However, I've sent you some bullet points, if you can touch on that as well. Uh, we won't take any more of your time. Uh, this is our great respected Imam Saab. I uh, spoke about you throughout the program. So, mashallah, everyone knows who you are. So I'll, I'll pass it on to you. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina wa Nabiyina wa Shafiyina. ومولانا محمد عبدك ورسولك ونبيك وصلي على المؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات صلاة والسلام عليك يا سيدي يا رسول الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا سيدي يا رحمة للعالمين رضيت بالله ربا وبالإسلام دينا وبمحمد صلى الله عليه وسلم رسولا ونبيا honorable and respectable Elders, brothers and sisters, lovable youngsters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. First and foremost, I want to take this opportunity to express my gratitude to Muhtaram Kamran Saab and the rest of the Bradaran, the organizers of this online event, for inviting myself. And giving me this opportunity to share some words with the viewers, the listeners, in light of Quran and Sunnah. Kamran Bai mentioned that I have class at 7 o'clock. I forgot to also mention I have Isha Jamaat to lead here at Al Hikam Institute at 6 30. So I am very uh, limited, limited for time. Sorry for that, Azra. I didn't know. So, but Jazakallah, Amen. whatever you have a message, inshallah. Barakallah fikum, inshallah. In the 10 minutes or so that I have, I just want to share with you uh, one verse from the Quran, which I think has been a consistent theme throughout this discussion this evening, and also one prophetic narration in relation to the importance of good company. The verse from the Quran is from Surah Al-Ma'idah, Surah number 5, verse number 32, where Allah Almighty Jalla wa'ala mentioning what he has prescribed upon the Bani Israel. Jalla wa'ala says, Annahu man qatala nafsam bi ghayri nafsin aw fasadin fil ardi فَكَأَنَّمَا قَتَلَ النَّاسَ جَمِيعًا Subhanallah. Allah Almighty said that we prescribe, كَتَبْنَا عَلَى بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلَ We prescribe for the children of Israel that whoever killed a human being, and then there are exceptions to the uh, rule here, unless it be for manslaughter, or for mischief in the land. And Allah Almighty says, nasa jami'a. Then it is as though that individual has killed the whole of mankind. And similarly, وَمَنْ أَحْيَاهَا فَكَأَنَّمَا nasa jami'a. And whoever saved a human life, very relevant in the 
uh, current climate COVID-19 pandemic, which has gripped the world from east to west. Allah Almighty says, whoever uh, saved a human life, it is as though he had saved the whole of humanity, the whole of mankind. So this is the message of the Quran and from amongst the ta'limat and the teachings of Islam. So the blood of humans has no doubt been honored by Allah Almighty Jalla wa'ala. Here again reflect upon the words. Allah Almighty didn't say that whoever killed a Muslim. Rather, Allah Almighty says, Man qatala nafsam bi ghayri nafsin. That whosoever killed a human being. So there is no discrimination here. Uh, so Allah Almighty highlighting the sanctity of human life in this verse, Surah number 5, verse 32. Uh, so much so that if the blood of humans becomes dishonored, uh, then this is equal to the sanctity of all humans. So the disobedience of Allah Almighty Jalla has ultimately taken place if an individual was to wrongfully take the life of another person. So legitimizing murder or failing to deal with this crime leads to absolute anarchy. And eventually it could lead to individuals or parties initiating mass killing without even an eyebrow being raised. Therefore, uh, programs and events, dialogue and conversations such as what's happening tonight, and what happens uh, often in the aftermath of such a brutal crime in uh, the town or city that it affects, these conversations and dialogues are absolutely pivotal and important. And it is vital that our masajid, our ulama, the elders in our community, as well as educational institutes and community groups, uh, youth workers and the police all work together in order to prevent such a thing happening again. My deepest condolences to the young brother, 16-year-old Sarmad, who lost his life to his family, to his friends, uh, to those who were associated with him and to the community of deep tail in Preston. But the reality is what? That uh, prevention is better than cure. It is necessary that we educate our youngsters Bishop. and we have this dialogue and conversation within our communities so that we can prevent such a case or incident happening again in the future. And Sarmad, uh, this young 16-year-old who passed away is not the first individual to be a victim of knife crime. And unfortunately, he won't be the last. Uh, we are seeing that in our communities, there is a constant rise in uh, drugs and gangs and knife crime and general crime. And sadly, and unfortunately, generalizing in my discussion, uh, we find that it is Muslim youth who are often involved in these crimes. And they become a burden upon their uh, communities, upon their parents, and upon society at large. So it's absolutely pivotal uh, that we work towards prevention rather than cure. That we have these dialogues, not only on the back of when such a crime takes place, uh, but at all times, I urge uh, community leaders, youth workers, Imma Hazrat, elders in our community to work together with the police, with the necessary authorities in order to prevent uh, such a crime happening again. Because the impact, the impact of such a crime on society and especially upon the family, uh, the parents, the mother and father of the victim, uh, this is something that leads to adverse consequences and effects. Depression and 
uh, often leads uh, other youngsters taking the route of crime. I caught the last couple of minutes of your dialogue uh, with the brother who was on before me uh, that uh, we find that um, some people have this mentality of vengeance and revenge, eye for an eye and tooth for a tooth. Uh, and we see that prisoner uh, population then rises and it ruins lives. Um, essentially, the impact is such that it ruins uh, lives. And uh, the importance of human life, a uh, narration comes to mind, a uh, narration mentioning Ibn Majah Sharif, uh, where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam whilst making tuaf around the Ka'bah to Sharif, a famous narration, no doubt, you would have heard of. And uh, on the back of the verse that we shared with you from Surah number 5, verse 32, whilst making uh, tuaf around the house of Allah, in Makkah al-Mukarramah, the Prophet وسلم, stopped and addressed the Kaaba and said, Oh Kaaba to Sharifa, how pure you are, how pleasing is your fragrance, how exalted is your grandeur. But I swear by he in whose hands is my life that the respect of believers' blood, the respect of a believer's blood and his wealth is more honorable than you, O Kaaba to Sharifa. Yes. Such is the respect of humanity that the life of a believer is considered to be more sacred uh, than the Kaaba to Sharifa, the house of Allah Almighty. Jalla but unfortunately, uh, we have trivialized this matter to such an extent that if a 16 year old was to lose his life, a 20 year old was to uh, pass away due to knife crime, we will uh, mourn this for a few days. Uh, there will be uh, a, a post mortem so to speak, in loose terms uh, in the community and finger pointing and uh, everyone will uh, uh, look to blame somebody uh, on the back of such atro uh, uh, atrocious and unaccepted crime. But the reality is, as I mentioned, and the key message that I want to deliver, prevention is better than cure. And this is an issue which is affecting communities up and down the country. Uh, a couple of months ago, uh, in Oldham, we had an issue where I'm currently reading the Juma prayers uh, last year in Birmingham uh, and similarly in Slough uh, from news reports that we've heard from individuals that we've spoken to and unfortunately now in Preston as well, where a young Muslim brother has lost his life. Uh, so it's important, once again, I emphasize that we play our part in uh, preventing uh, such cases and instances from happening in the future. And the last part I leave you with uh, is in relation to uh, good character and good conduct uh, and company ultimately. Uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the hadith that I want to share with you. And my apologies if I'm not able to deliver uh, a, a comprehensive discussion. What I had in mind uh, was thrown straight out to the window. Uh, when we, Inshallah, uh, we will bring another program to, to I have something for half an hour, but I'm looking at the time and I'm seeing that the Muqtadis are slowly walking in. I wanted nice. to share this narration with you. You've heard this narration before. It serves as a reminder for us all. The Prophet Wasallam said, Masalul Jalisi Salihi Wal Jalisi Su'i Kamasali Sahib Al Miski Wakir Al Haddadi. The Prophet Wasallam said that the example of good company in comparison to bad company is like the example of a musk seller and the blacksmith's bellows or furnace. So, so much so that the Prophet Sallallahu said from the first example, if you were to uh, walk into the shop of a musk seller, even if you don't buy something, the fact that you're surrounded by a good environment, so much so that the uh, the effects of that fragrance will rub off onto your body. Uh, then, uh, ultimately, uh, you know that this is an example of good company and you will enjoy the smell. But uh, similarly, bad company, the Prophet ﷺ made this analogy and comparison uh, to uh, the blacksmith's furnace. That if you walk through the workshop of a blacksmith, even if you don't want to be there, but the effects of the the smoke and the effects of being in such an environment are, are detrimental to such an extent that either your body will be burned or your clothes will be burned or simply the bad smell 
will come onto your libas and your clothing. And this is why it's important that if youngsters find themselves in the wrong circles, if they are associating with the wrong individuals, wrong people and wrong personnel, take yourselves out of that environment. Take yourselves out of those circles uh, and look for good company. Uh, Alhamdulillah, during this third lockdown, the massages have remained open as opposed to in the first and second lockdown. Uh, so we must take advantage of being in the houses of Allah Almighty Jalla wa'ala and conversing with the ulama and sitting with our elders and learning from them. But ultimately, uh, this is what will lead to uh, the key message that I'm trying to illustrate, that prevention is better than cure. Allah Ta'ala raised the darajat of this young man who passed away. Uh, uh, Mahfur, Sadmad, Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala grant him the highest maqam in Jannatul Firdaus and which he allows to learn the lessons of his tragic death. وَمَا عَلَيْنَا إِلَّا الْبَلَاغُ الْمُبِينَ Ameen, Ameen. Jazakallah khairan, Hazrat. I know you're rushing for your salah. Uh, Jazakallah khairan. Once again, we apologize uh, for your time, uh, cutting your time. But mashallah, precise message. Let's, you know, prevent rather than have a cure and have good company and you'll be inshallah protected from these crimes inshallah jazakallah khairan imam adil sahab from uh, bradford inshallah we will be hosting another program because there's so many questions as well. so inshallah we will request you again and give you full time as well assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh so my dear respected listeners and uh, brothers sisters children you all heard the message. You all heard there's facilities out there. There is good out there. You know, there is, yes, like the great Sheikh just said, that there are people pointing fingers, blame, blame this guy, blame that guy, blame the police, blame the massages, blame the parents. But no, it's a collective blame we must take on. And we must unite together, come together, and support our organizations like Byron's, uh, like uh, our own brother Omar Khan works with the schools. I've been to schools where there have been uh, meetings with the police. So the police are doing their bit as well. You know, do you know, please do a spot check around Mo Park, try to get, uh, find knives, and they do stashes of them. And then in the ginnels, uh, alleyways. So, you know, the thing is, is everyone is working in their own field. Now we need to come together and support each other and don't blame each other. Don't say the masjids are not, the mosques are doing enough or the police are doing enough. We all have to come together. And to the brothers who are listening out there, out there especially Sarmad's friends, a vengeance, revenge will just cause more agony. It will cause more destruction. As the great scholar said, the youth worker said, a victim of crime, a victim of knife crime. John Joe's brother, Byron, he's a prime example for us. That how he made a legacy, not destruction behind John Joe. Yeah, he could have gone out and done murder or horrendous acts. Like some of you might be contemplating, some of you might be carrying out. Remember, that is not the way of humanity. Forget, I'm not just talking to Muslims here. I'm talking to everyone. You know, look how many, we've gone past 80,000 lives have just died in this year and a half of COVID. Why are you adding to this? Why are people adding to this due to senseless and tragic knife crime or drugs, overdoses and things like that? Come together, Deep Blue Community Association works tirelessly. Our brother, uh, MSK, a official brother Muhammad uh, Shoaib Saib and uh, respected scholars, they are there for you. So if we see our scholars are not doing it, well, have you tried speaking to them? Some say they're not accessible. Well, try. You take the first step. Tell them. Tell. You remember the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu that you will not change yourselves or your afflictions. You will not change them until you change. You, you use your own hands to change it. You have to come forward and start to start changing these uh, issues. So my respected listeners of the Community Association, remember, this is a, a work which we all have to do, not just one community. It's not a Muslim uh, uh, issue. It's not 
a non-Muslim issue. It's not a black issue. It's not an Asian issue. It's not a white issue. It's a combined issue. So we have to come forward. I remember my youngsters, you know, Allah said, everyone will taste death. And Allah's Habib وسلم, has given us the answer as well. That patience in Allah Masabirin, that God will be with those who have patience. That seek help through prayer and patience. And that goes to everyone. And then, you know, what we created for. God says in the in Surah Mulk, that I have created, the sovereign Lord has created, He has created this. Life, what for? What is he created death for? And the translation reads that I have created death and life to test you that who amongst you does do good actions. And how do we mourn? Mourning in Islam is a very, very blessed process. In fact, in all religions will promote this patience, you know, uh, prayer, but in Islam specifically, I tell you that the Prophet Sallallahu said that when a person dies, he only is left with three things. Everything stops. He said, what was the three things? First one, knowledge. He leaves behind. The knowledge he leaves behind. You know, he's if taught something good to somebody about the deen. And if he leaves that behind or if he acted upon it, then Allah will reward him continuously for that, for good actions. So you will get that reward. And then secondly, to those who do sadaqah jariyah, meaning people who leave something behind benefits humanity. Even that means a, a institute, educational institute, homeless institute, wherever you go. So wherever you're going to go, you uh, leave this behind good good things. You know, like Sarmad's legacy, their parents are doing and the family and friends are doing. And you know, it's been on the posters. Of course, it's concluded because it's past its target. Over 11,500 pounds of worth of water wells will be made in his name. You know, it will be mosques will be made in his name. So basically, he'll get that reward. But so you can do that. You can do a good action for him. Don't go down the road. And, you know, I you know here and I know we've been there. We, we grew up in this deep deal as well. You know, we went to schools as well. We were on the streets as well. So we know people think that, you know, get drunk or having a spliff is that is remembrance. That is not remembrance. I, I personally think it's really self-pity. And uh, it's, uh, I'll tell you the honestly truth, because I've been there, it is self-pity. And uh, basically, is to a point is selfishness. Do something which will benefit the brother and the family, go and support them. Not the family has to make statements to you, but my dear youngsters, that please be calm because we don't want any trouble after our beloved son. You know, so support them, come towards them. This is for all, Muslim, non-Muslim, for all. And, and then uh, look at their loss, see how they are dealing with it. I spoke to brother Sikman's father, look what did they, did they do. They pray, they, they uh, support us to do this program. And then on top of that, they basically uh, do this legacy, water wealth and helping the orphans and poor, helping a charity. So you can still donate why me and mother then will pass that on to that. Uh, the, uh, go, uh, uh, the gift, uh, sorry, GoFundMe page as uh, mashallah raised its target, but you can still speak to the family and the charity which was doing the charitable work and arranging all this, uh, you can ring them directly or you can donate via Me Madat Welfare Trust and we continue to do the work. You've seen the work of Me Madat. Go on www.memadat.com and you'll see the work. You know, we've been doing two medical centers. We've got uh, helping the orphans, COVID packages. We have uh, flood packages, which we've done. And in local as well, helping the homeless uh, and COVID packages in the first lockdown now as well, working with the community association, doing great work. So be part of that. Be part of something positive. And the final part of the hadith was that a pious, uh, if somebody leaves a pious child behind, 
become them become them and then basically you will pray if your loved ones have loved, uh, left this dunya of this world and your parents will be proud of you the community will be proud of you and you will be proud of yourself as well and allah will love you for that god will love you for that uh, for being a good person uh we're gonna play a video uh, because i think our great imam uh unfortunately again was running late uh imam of the rasul alivri sahab uh he's not joined us yet brother uh shoaib i gathered uh the imam was unfortunately uh was not feeling well when i did speak to him and he said he's going to make his utmost uh effort to come on the program but then the prayer obviously like imam adil he's got prayer as well so obviously he had to uh it was that time he only could give us that much time but uh he said he will try to join us at the end maybe for the dua but he's with us he's doing community work he does uh, juma khutbas you know on these related issues on juma speeches on speeches uh on mics and uh we need to come together and support them uh, the, uh we thank uh, raza mosque and uh, for their support and uh Uh, especially the imam and the committee's support jazakallah khairan so brother shaib can we play that video now for in the memory of sarmat and for his friends come inside zain 10 minutes okay do you have a second for your autograph yeah sure Hey Zayn. Hey, how you doing? Good. A uh, huge fan. I love the album. Would you mind signing an autograph? Sure, of course. Thank you. There you go. Thank you. Uh, do you mind me asking a question? Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Uh, the album is called The Beginning. How did it all begin? Wow, that's a good question. Uh, I've got some time. Why don't you have a seat? You know. Um, It started about 15 years ago when I was kind of your age. At the beginning, it wasn't very easy. Actually, it all started with a friend of mine. Yes, man. Yes, man. And yeah, and yeah, so hard, so hard. Where there's a right, there is no wrong. I always thought we were so strong, but our time just flew right by. There wasn't a chance to say goodbye. I'm so confused. I feel all alone. Deep in my heart, I know Allah has called you home. But yeah, your smile still lingers in my mind. And yeah, it's so hard. I just break down and cry. I remember. Your eyes find a way to melt my heart. Most of all, I remember, I remember your smile. Sometimes I lie awake at night, the pain in my heart I just can't fight. Why did you have to go away? Yet I know none of us can stay. You'll always be, always be so special to me. Special to me. In this world, you'll always live as a memory. Whoa. But yet. 
your smile still lingers in my mind and yeah it's so hard i just break down and cry i remember your eyes find a way to melt my heart most of all i remember I remember your smile. Your smile. Your smile. Your smile. Still lingers in my mind. And yeah. And yeah. It's so hard. It's so hard. I just break down. I just break down. Cry. I remember. Remember. Your Find a way to melt my heart. Most of all, most of all, I remember, I remember, I remember, I remember your smile. MashaAllah, SubhanAllah, a great message given by a renowned Nasheed artist. Uh, Zayn Baker, who you all know, especially the youngsters will know, and the adults, he's done some great work. And uh, this was a, a true story relating to uh, the the Nasheed artist, uh, Zayn Baker. His friend died when they were young, and that's how he died, basically, in a knife crime or a cr crime related murder. So basically, that's how he started. He turned that tragedy into something positive. And today, he does f fantastic work, not just as a Nasheed artist, he does fantastic work by supporting the people of Africa, that's where he's from, and, you know, water projects and things like that. He's done some great work over his lifetime. So this is the true legacy. So that was for you out there, a message from uh, the Nasheed artists and from ourselves that you could build a positive change, make a positive life, and leave a positive legacy for Sarmad and all the knife crime victims, whether it's John Joe or whoever has left us. Uh, we offer our condolences and our prayers are with their families. Uh, inshallah, as a, a, a brother Shoaib, we got a few minutes. Uh, as you have known Sarmad as well. And uh, just before I say this, this, this Nasheed, I I basically lost a very close friend from our community, brother Jiruhel Khan Sir Blansab. Allah Allah give you al Firdos, and it just shocked our community at that time. How that guy, that was what he was about, smiles and uh, helping others. And I'm sure uh, Sarmad's family and friends remember Sarmad, the, the smiles and the good times they had. Keep that in your mind, keep the memories and build a legacy for him. And don't ruin it, please. Not for you, not for anyone else. Change your way. And that way, that will, the reward will be given to Salmad as well. And his family will be feeling that you're behind them. Okay, uh, Brother Shoy, would you like to add something there? Because obviously you were a friend and you knew Salmad as well and you know a lot of youngsters as well. Uh, what's your message? I know you, mashallah, as a young man, have spent a lot of your time, dedication, just to uh, reading nasheeds and praising Allah Almighty and the beloved of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and brother is known all around the world mashallah, for his uh, uh, work and many great nasheed artists uh, praise brother Shoy for his efforts and the hard work he does every week and then of course editing and websites all these putting together uh, making a website and all this work is, is Brother Shoy's work. You know, I do speak because he's the hero behind the scenes. Allah reward him and bless him and bless his family. Brother Shoy, would you like to add something? Five, ten minutes and then we'll make dua. Five minutes if you can and then we can make dua. Uh, and then we'll finish the program. MashaAllah, Alhamdulillah, what a beautiful program it was today, MashaAllah. In the memory of our beloved brother, the committee, the whole committee of Boston, and different parts of the world um, has joined in today, mashallah. Mashallah. Doing uh, 
communication, any background of different people, where they are anywhere of the world, like not John Joe, Brother Jonas, Brother Umar, Brother Najib, they are more Imam Adil Shazad from Bradford who has joined in the world. Mashallah, I like to say that <clears throat> that uh, we make dua in Allah always for some sub who was oh, in, in this situation and uh, inshallah my dogs with him and his family and his fa family and friends and uh, i would like to give a message a uh, short one as i have not prepared that um instead of going the wrong path if you're struggling to talk, talk to your parents talk to the imam sahab talk to your teachers talk to someone with you can share your sadness when you're in trouble or anything like that you can talk to so you can have like a comfort in your um you know take the away from the uh, heaviness on your head so you can release it and work on it and inshallah okay uh, uh, brother shoaib sorry to interrupt mashallah we've got uh Maulana abdul rasul al risa he's running late for salah but he said he would like to say a few words if you don't mind and then you can finish at the end mashallah uh, uh, we welcome our uh, Imam Abdul Rasul Alwisa. We welcome him for joining us, mashallah. Jazakallah khairan. Allah reward you. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I know your health is not well and you want to go to masjid as well. So uh, everyone knows the Zatsa. So inshallah, we'll pass it on to you. Maulana Abdul Rasul Alwisa, Faza Masjid, Preston. First, I'd like to congratulate you all for the beautiful event that you have. Uh, arranged uh, in the memories of the brother who passed away through the uh, knife crime. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala elevate his uh, uh, ranks uh, hereafter. Mm -hmm. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant him highest place in Jannah. Um, and uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give um, sabr to the family and the um, relatives, friends. Um, these kind of events, I think we should organize more often, not just we don't need to wait for something to happen like this so we uh, wake up. A, every single moment uh, like this is kind of wake up call for especially uh, for Asian community, for Muslim community to get together because Islam teaches us a very beautiful um, thing to um, Muslim people, especially that unite, be with one another, have the pain for your other Muslim fellow when they're in pain. You should feel that pain as well. So we need to wake up as a community. We need to work hard to help one another. We need to uh, try to educate our youngsters, youth. And that's why we have the community centre. But unfortunately, our community centre are not working as they're supposed to be working. It could be maybe the mentality that we carry from uh, uh, back home or uh, it could be something else. Uh, uh, we've no idea. But we really need to, youth need to wake up. You, youth need to come forward and you need to say, look, we need to do something for our youngsters, our children, but who they're going to grow. Because we lived our life. Elders have lived their life. Now it's time for the youth to pass it on to the next generations. How are we going to do that? We don't have nothing ourselves. So as, as a community, we need to work hard. And as a community, these community centers that we made, we didn't just make them to, to, to run a business. It's not a business. It's Islam. We need to do something good for our community. And even if you help one person, regardless of the religion, we may, that could be the enough thing for us to, the, to last hereafter. That may benefit us hereafter. So we of need course. to realize, we need to wake up, brothers and sisters, in this community if in this country or wherever we live the one thing we need to remember is that to help one another and to educate our children to stay away from all kind of crimes not just a knife crime it could be involving drugs it could involve in drinking alcohol it could be uh, just wandering around the street we need to work we need to work together we need to help one another we need to educate our children talk about islam talk about dunya talk about regular problem children somebody may be uh, going through so much in his head so we need to when we give them the opportunity we'll give them the platform where they can come forward and talk about their problems their uh, uh, the, the, their sufferings at least we may be able to help them that is why the community is there that's why we have the community center that's why we have the ulama that's why we have the the, uh, the the charities that are working for uh, good causes 
So all these NGOs, these organizations need to get together and come up with some kind of idea or plan where we can engage our youth, our youngsters, our children, and we can do good for them so they can carry it for their children. If we're not doing our duty properly, how are our children going to do any good to the community? And then end up, uh, it's like half of our youth is lost. They don't know what they need to do. That's why they end up getting into either drugs, into other crimes, into other wrong things. We need to do something as a community. We need to work hard and we need to do it now. We don't need to wait for something to happen like this and then we arrange these kind of events. With these events, rather than happening happen on, the, uh, obviously because of Corona now, it's happening on the, uh, uh, through a media, but they should uh, be addressed in public. We need to get to the people. We need to arrange some kind of uh, uh, events in, in a, like some kind of center where we invite our youth. Unfortunately, our youth is missing. We don't get to see the youth, not even in the mosque, so we don't get to see them. Why? They, there is a, a barrier between that. So we need to break that barrier. We need to build a bridge so the youth can come and talk about their problem. We need to give them the opportunity and not just all the time criticizing somebody. If they've do, done something wrong in their life, we shouldn't be criticizing them. We should encourage them to do good in their life. And same thing, a same job. Our parents also have a duty to ask their child where they're living, if they're living outside, they're going outside, they need to know where they're going. Don't stop them from not from going outside. Say, okay, where are you going? At least let us know. Help them find out what their problems are. Talk, you need to talk to them. If you're gonna stay home, be act like a parent, but yet you don't even ask your child what uh, he's been going through, what he's been doing, that is the wrong thing. And Islam does not teach us that islam teaches a clear thing it says that you should be looking after your child you should be you're responsible for it you're the one uh, a child has a right on you that you give them all the things that they need it's, it's a child right and parents need to do that they need to speak to their children not just all the time stopping them from going outside provide them environment in the house or wherever they go provide some kind of safe environment for them where they can easily talk about their problem rather than going into uh, some wrong hands. So oh, my message is very clear, uh, brother and sister, we need to get together, we need to unite, we need to help one another. And that's why the community centers, all the NGOs, all the organizations, charities, whoever is working, wherever, if you're going to work individually, you're never going to get anywhere. We need to unite together. We need to work hard and we need to make sure that our, our youth don't go the wrong path. Uh, my du'as with the family again, and the, my du'as that uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive his old sins and may, and may Allah Ameen. grant him highest place in Jannah and whoever participates in this event and to make this Ameen. event successful, uh, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward them as well. Zakullah khair, come from the take leave now because uh, it's just only five minutes. No problem. Zakullah khair, Allah ajr azimah ta'a for my. Our Imam Sahib is always supportive of these events. Zakullah khair, inshallah. And if you can speak about this on Juma, khutbah, uh, which I said, Imam Sahib does that regular about issues. He does it in Urdu, English. So there are scholars out there waiting for us uh, to approach them, and they are trying to approach us, as Imam Sahib is saying. Uh, and we will be arranging that event which uh, with Omar Khan and Najif uh, Bai and also Najif Shah Sahib and uh, also with the Imam as well. So we will go to this youth club, John Joe's youth club event. We will take our communities. We will invite the sisters uh, and the you know uh, daughters as well. Because if our daughters are going to go to the town centre on their own or they can uh, you know go to school, colleges, we trust them and uh, we need to make them aware of safe environments where they can go. Because this is, remember one thing, because this question was asked and John George is answered it, that it's for everyone. Uh, Omar yes. Khan answered it as well. Uh, it's for everyone, women, you know, daughters, sons, you know, uh, everyone. So it's basically they're working on all fields. It's not, not just for the boys. There's an issue with the girls. Recently, Brother Shoy, you mentioned, and I read upon this, there was an attack on a 14-year-old who died in London, near London, Reading. Uh, so basically, 14-year-old, you know, he died. of. Uh, there was uh, two boys and a girl involved. So, you four, know, uh, sorry, uh, four boys and a girl. And there was a girl involved. So, there is, uh, you know, there's both problems. Don't say it's just a boy's problem. It's not a boy's problem, it's everyone's problem. And uh, 
Yeah, so we, we will uh, arrange that uh, once again. Jazakallah uh, khairan to Brother Shoaib. And there's a couple of suggestions which uh, came on from Brother Hussein, mashallah. Jazakallah khairan, uh, Brother Hussein, Master, Allah reward you because he works privately for, with Fish Week Rangers. And Brother Fiaz does amazing work uh, with his youth club as well in Ashton. So, you know, there are places and they have been advertised. We've advertised them, but we just need to make them more, uh, promote them more and make them more accessible. He said, uh, Brother, he's giving the message what all the speakers gave, that it's communication, talk. There people will talk, talk, listen. Like Elijah said, there is time we learn to listen and let them talk. And the weeks they spend together, so if we arrange these things, if the weeks they spend together will benefit them socially, mentally and spiritually get to know other from different backgrounds and areas. So again, message of unity is not about a Muslim problem or a non-Muslim problem. It's all our problem. We're all from here. Uh, and, uh, you know, like Don Joe's mother said that half of me, uh, I died that day when my son died. And I'm sure that's the same feeling. The parents, it's very hard for a father to bury as a child, you know, and it's very hard for a mother to see a child go at 16. There are hopes for him, future for him just lost. So, you know, we need to support. This is where communities come into action. The community needs to support each other. Where you live, you have that warmth of art. So talk to people, get to know your neighbours. No, we, we don't know our neighbours anymore. Uh, and there's a, another sister, Sister Fazila Patel, and she said, therapists, while provisions are available for girls and women, so especially when we are told that mothers are the madrasas for children. So I think sister is saying that they then let them lead. Let the mothers come for if that's the first school of thought, that's your first school. The only the hadith yeah. Mubarak, that your mother, the mother is the first school for the child. So nature, mother nature's and mother is look what the teaching of the Prophet said, he said, Sahaba, he said, who should we love the most? After Allah and the beloved Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who should we love the most? And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, your mother. So, um, and second time, your mother. Third well, time, your mother. Then look at the status of the mother. That Three times the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is mentioning the status of the mother and then says, after that is your father. Love him as well. And the hadith, like the mother has the Jannah Brother Shoaib read some of the poetry of uh, Mia Muhammad Baksha in English, that they are the breezes of paradise. And like the Prophet Sallallahu said, that they are the uh, the Jannah of paradise lies underneath your mother's feet. And mashallah, how lucky this brother Vairan is or other brothers who have been serving their mother during this difficult time. And, you know, that's what it is. The mother is that status. She could do much more. And we need to allow that to happen. So support our sisters' groups. And, and like I'm saying, we will arrange this with Byron. And we will. And that sister, Brother Fiaz, uh, you know, his wife, she does very active work at the youth club in the, the connected with Fishwick Ranger. So's member, he was trying to arrange an event. But because there was such big interest, so the community needs it. The youngsters want it. 400 yeah. people turn to Brother member, and because it's a small place, they are to rearrange, and soon that will, event will happen as well. So, yeah. Yeah, so we need to support everyone, whether it's Suz member, whether it's Fiaz, whether it's uh, Brother Omar, Brother Fiaz, or whether it's uh, our Imams, our scholars, and whether it's the people like Byron, our youth workers, youth mentors like Omar Khan, and uh, counselors like Najif, Brother Najif. He went out his way, studied. And, and came back and wants to give this to the community. So we will advertise all that. So our final words, uh, Brother Shoaib, and then we'll do dua. As I was saying before, um, we should all come together, inshallah, and inshallah. work together, and, and, uh, and, bring, uh, and bring everyone to, close together. To, um, if they are going in the wrong path, we, we should listen to them why they got the wrong path, and we should get them to the right path before anything happens again in the life might go away and you want to you know like um as so the I, is clear yeah. i was saying that the imams have said you know we need prevention 
Islam offers yeah. prevention. You know, a positive community offers prevention, not the cure is too late. It's needed, yeah. obviously, when after month, there, there is a need for a cure thereafter. But when you're dead, a person has died, he's got not second chance. You have, you're alive. That's why he said, you know, the Mia Muhammad Bakshi, you know, that's what the part he said. He said, don't rely on your breath because you don't yeah. know if you're going to come or go. Sure. Yeah. And we're all going to be buried soon. So basically, you know, let's forgive and forget things. And like Brother Shoy be saying, you know, think positive, help each other, talk to each other. If you've got an issue, talk to somebody. There are people out there. Even yeah. your imam, your scholars will be able happy to listen. Now in all our massages, almost all our massages, there is an English speaking scholar. Some are from our community. They were born and bred here. Yeah. So I will do dua with that. Jazakallah khairan for the show, for promoting, working hard to do all this work. And I've got, um, one uh, uh, suggestions that we should do like once a month like with different topics online yeah. during COVID-19. So we can learn something and also we can learn something and protect others as well from going well, home as well. Sure, Michelle, that, that's the thing. I mean, me, mother, and your program and Imam Saab, we do, yeah. there are programs. Imam Adil, Shadad from Bradford, all these scholars, they yes. do, do programs, but we need people's sport to promote them programs and take part in them programs like they did today. Sure. Mashallah, it was touching and uh, I'm very happy in one way that something positive, the community came and all these respected elders and sisters, you know, made suggestions and questions. And there are some more questions to be answered, big questions. Sure. So inshallah, like we do every fortnight, we do a program. I mean, mother, me and brother Shoaib try to help us and promote that. And brother Shoaib does a Friday program as well. He's going to be doing every two weeks, sometimes every three weeks. He does it's that. Saturdays now. Yeah, it's mashallah Saturdays and Sundays is the me mother program. I will, uh, inshallah, speak to Imam Adil uh, and Imam Asim, his brother, for the next program so they can come, so they can give us some time and elaborate on their work as well and uh, let him complete and conclude his speech in full. Jazakallah khairan al Fatiha. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Maliki yawm al-Dini ya'khadam duwayyakum istaeena ihlidin khiratul mustaqeen. Zina namta alayhim wa'ilin maktubiyan wa thawamin. Allahu hada Allahu fi'lani alayhim wa rahim. Allahu fi'lani bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Allahu hada Allahu sumadilam yilid wa lam yilid wa lam yakul wa rahim. والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين يا الله يا رحمن you are the most merciful the most kind ya Allah prayed and uh, uh, the scholars ya Allah spoke about your blessed religion and uh, the community workers came together to do good uh, the scholars and the counselors and the community workers all the work they have done ya Allah ya Allah in divine court and reward them Amen ya Rahman Ya Allah, we pray for our brother Sarmad, who tragically lost his life in knife crime. Ya Allah, Ya Rahman. Ya Allah, bless his grave with the garden of paradise. Ya Allah, Ya Rahman. Ya Allah, Ya Rahman, elevate him to the hand of Jannah. Amin. Ya Allah, Ameen. Ya Rahman. Ya Allah, we, Ya Allah, pray for the family. Ya Allah, grant them patience. Ya Allah, Ameen. the ability to turn to you. Ya Allah, Ya Rahman. And Ya Allah, you bless them in return. For uh, uh, bless them in the patience and uh, reward upon their loss. Ya Allah, Ameen. Ya Rahman, I make this loss into a positive, in one sense, his memory a positive one. Ya Allah, Ya Ameen. Rahman, and uh, a legacy uh, behind him which will change the lives of others. I've been, sure. and Ya Allah, we pray for the friends of uh, Brother Sarbad, uh, Ya Allah, Ya you're merciful. Ya Allah, grant them patience and wisdom. To deal with this uh, tragedy, I mean, Ya Allah, Ya Rahman, in your Allah, we pray for all those who have lost their lives in knife crime. The other day, a 10 year old child, Ya Allah, Ya Rahman, who are on fitra at this moment, nature. And uh, Ya Allah, Ya Rahman, 
we pray for family as well and the family of Reading and the family of all over the country the family our uh, uh, brother who came on iron by grant him patience hidayah I mean, amen ya allah ya rahman and grant ya allah ya rahman iman to all of them i mean i mean ya rabban i mean ya allah ya rahman we pray to you ya allah ya rahman that you make our society a safe one i mean ya allah ya rahman safe uh, ya allah safeguard our children give us the ability to educate them and grant them wisdom to have good company i mean ya allah ya rahman grant all the schools and all the uh, communities to work together to I mean. I mean and try to forbid the evil i mean ya rahman i mean ya allah ya rahman the evil in our society read it i mean ya allah the covid which is ya allah killed over 80000 in this country Hello. alone and millions in uh, it turning to millions in uh, across the world ya allah ya rahman you are the most merciful the most kind ya allah ya rahman read this uh, problem this uh, this virus from humanity i mean Ya Allah, those who have died, Iman, Ya Allah, Ya Rahman, deliver them to the highest Jannah. I mean, Ya Allah, Ya Rahman, you are the most merciful, most kind. Ya Allah, Ya Rahman, give us the ability to respect each other and love our young ones and respect our elders. I mean, Ya Rahman, Ya Allah, bless us with goodness in this world and goodness in the Akhirah, protect us from the fire. I mean, Ya Allah, Ya Rahman, uh, bless our parents and those who are left in dunya. Elevate them to the highest Jannah. Amen. Ya Rabbana. جعلني مقيم الصلاة من ذريات ربنا وتقبل الدعاء ربنا غفر لي ولوالدي وللمؤمنين يوم يقوم الحساب آمين يا الله يا رحمن جسك سنة في دعائي واسطة يا رب حاك أرض كوري يا أرض هو هذا كي خصوم مجبور كي يبدا من وابسيه وسبك لبره لا إله إلا الله محمد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إن الله ملائكة يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما على مصلى على سيدنا مولانا محمد وعلى آله سيدنا مولانا محمد بارك وسلم تسليما سبحان الله يا من يسيق والسلام على مولانا سليم والحمد لله رب العالمين once again جزاك الله خيرا to all our listeners and and our guests as well Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you all. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. In two weeks' time, there'll be another program. Please do join us. Jazakallah uh, khaykum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Peace be upon you. Amen.